Once again, episode 112. I am so happy to be here with you guys tonight. I am uh, joined, as always, with my resident homies, Casey and Joel. We'll see the Professor Joseph soon. Um, we are joined by a true legend in my eyes, I'm sure with many of your eyes as well. Um, another one of those guys that I've been listening to for 20 plus years and um, his his art has, has been such an inspiration to me throughout my whole entire career doing this type of music and I'm, I'm very honored. It's such a pleasure to be joined by Luke LeMay of Gorguts. What's going on, Luke? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your nice words. No, yes, I'm very man. happy to be here tonight. It, it took a while, but uh, it got did. <laughs> hey, I got you. I, I had you on the hook and I didn't let go, man. <laughs> yeah, we, oh, me, and, me and Luke have actually been going back and forth since early uh, 2022. And he's a busy man. And, and I respect that. I always popped in and made sure that you knew that I was still wanting you to come on the show and uh persistence has got us here so i love that and uh yeah dude thank you again this is this is great this is my pleasure. This my pleasure. makes me feel truly like we're doing we're doing good work with this show and and it, it's just a big payoff to be able to get somebody like you so thanks luke oh thank you that, that's very nice of you but anyway as i said earlier you know i i watched uh i i watched the, the 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 podcast every now and then and you guys do great work so i'm, I'm more than happy to uh to join uh, with you guys well, that that, that well, makes me you. feel really good i'm i'm so glad that it it's come across your radar i don't know if it was just because of me but it doesn't matter <laughs> that you've watched the show is something that is just that blows my mind so um thank you for that and um before we move forward let's do the damn thing with the plugs here we got uh some cool stuff obviously battleforgecoffee.com I want you guys to go over there and check out what they got. They're doing good things over there. Our friends over in Deeds of Flesh um, started a coffee company, guys. They got uh, swag. They got coffee. They got everything you need. So go check that out. Support the underground. And then uh, big news for the podcast. We finally do have merch up again, guys. CaliDeathPodcast.BigCartel.com. <laughs> There's two different designs. Um, it is an OG style shirt that we have, but we switched it over to the right chest because of all you guitar players, your straps were getting in the way for us to see our logo. So <laughs> we switched it over to the right side. Guitar players. <laughs> live yep. now. Live. Yep. Just, just went live just now. It did just go live now. And um, we also have a new design. It is a full color design. And it is the the design that you would have seen at, on the episode 100 episode. That is a design that we wanted to get on a shirt. We, you know, got it made and purchased, but we got too lazy in actually getting it on shirts. And now it's finally on shirts, guys. So mm -hmm. go uh, support the. Sh if you want to support us, then keep this thing going smoothly. Then uh, hit us up at calideathpodcast.bigcartel.com and. Uh, help support the show and uh luke for you bro i want to get some plugs for you where where can people go to get gore guts information merchandise all that kind of stuff uh merchandise i haven't been this uh, much uh, productive uh in the past couple of years on that you know but you can go on the G uh, gsr for that we have a, we have a page there but uh, other than that, you know, for information and uh, what's up, you know, those things, uh, the uh, pe uh, people can go on the Facebook page. That's the uh, that's the best uh, resource. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Go over there and uh, support uh, this man and his, and his bandmates. It's great art. And also, if you're uh, new to the show, I'm sure that some of you have come here to uh, see Luke and uh if you're new to this thing, um, we do it every week. It's live on twitch.tv. Um, we do it, uh, and then it's uploaded on YouTube as soon as we can do it after, usually the next day. Um, Spotify. Yeah, we've been doing it for a couple of years now, and we love 
all the people that we've come across so far and uh, we still love doing it and we'll be doing it for a long time. So if you uh, are new to this, subscribe and help us out. Hit up that YouTube page, subscribe to that. I'll follow all the social media, Instagram, Facebook, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Joel mentioned Spotify and Apple Podcasts are on there. As well. All that. Yeah, yeah we're Spotify, all over there. And um, it, and if you're new to Twitch, uh, subscribe to our show too. Oh, yeah. Get twitchy with it. And that is it. We are through the plugs, guys. So, um, Luke, yes, thank you so much again. I'm, uh, I, I want to hear everything, how the show goes. We, we like to go as far back into your past as possible. Mm -hmm. If you uh, have an early, early memory of... Because uh, there's that moment when you're listening to music as a child where it isn't... It just... I always say this is I've said it 112 episodes basically, but it stops being just background noise. Something clicks with you and makes oh. your attention go to the music. So yeah. if you can find one of those for us, that would be rad. Oh, there's a few. There's a few. Uh, but as as young as I can go, I mean a uh, in the house home, uh, it was, uh, you know, dad would play a lot of country. He likes his American country, you know, Johnny Cash, Buscar Willie, Ricky Skaggs, you know, uh, more the 70s and 80s uh, uh, country player. Which where did you where like. did you grow up, Luke? Oh, I grew up in a small town, uh, Danville, which is about, uh, let's say, 15 minutes from where I live now, I, I live now in a town called Richmond. There's like a million Richmond, you know, especially in the States. Yeah, there's a uh, Richmond uh, right right a half yeah. an hour from me right now. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, but the, the, the town where I am, uh, actually, I'm in uh, Melbourne County. And uh, it's about uh, 3,500 uh, uh, population. Everybody knows everybody, you know. So, so I kind of came back after Montreal to the small town uh, thing, you know, which I always liked. I mean, don't get me wrong, love going into big cities and everything, but I like to come back to the gravel road here once I'm uh, I'm done with the traffic and uh, right. uh, you know, love seeing people and everything. But I like, you know, uh, I like the, the 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 more peaceful uh, life here. I yeah. like it. And here I live in the country, you know. I'm I, I had uh, there's a small house. Uh, where I live here, I've been here for uh, let's say close to ten years now. Buddy of mine, you know, it's a farmland, and that was a little empty house. You know, we met because I carved the sign for uh, for his business back then. Hmm. I'll come back to the to the music uh, at home uh, as a kid, but just to 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 get you in the in the day to day thing, you know. So yeah, so it's total country life, man. Fucking uh, working at the sawmill uh working at the workshop and fucking cranking uh, the boogie here up to 11 and then it doesn't bother mm -hmm. anybody so it's all good that's what's <laughs> up dude yeah, yeah. i kind of yeah. figured that that would be a uh, uh, a good place for someone like you to be just the balance of yeah you love being around people and getting into the city but you also have to have that duality that balance yeah. where you you can get away from everything and and yeah. kind of just hone your craft nobody's gonna bother you yeah you're not yeah. gonna bother anybody yeah and my friends he's like this as well you know uh he, wor he worked all over the world and stuff but i mean uh, nobody comes here you know so i feel very 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 lucky you know to have uh my foot here you know and uh, to 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 settle you know and i i mean a nice studio you know so it's it, it's it's just perfect for composition you know i love it you know you can go for a walk in the woods fucking uh, i drive uh not even five minutes and i'm I, i'm at the workshop you know so it's, it's just, uh, i I, lo I love it so so coming back to when i grew up it was the same the same life pretty much you know very small town like 3000 people in danville i'm saying which is about uh, 10 15 minutes from here my family's there still you know my mom's there my brother's there so that's where i grew up small town little school you know lots of music home dad was playing uh, uh, acoustic guitar singing a lot of uh, elvis and buscar willie and all these uh, country guys you know from the 70s and stuff so that was my first immersion uh, in, in, I believe. But mm -hmm. maybe 
not even a block away. I had uh, a few cousin uh, living there, and uh, my cousin I uh, really enjoy spending time there every now and then. And he had uh, how do you call that? Uh, it's a it, it's a vinyl, but a, a forty five. You know the, the yeah. small one. Is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Forty five. And it was uh, it was uh, uh, Iron Maiden uh, forty five. But what what was nice. the fucking song on this? I think it was a number of the beast, but like single or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so he had that, and he had uh, Made in Japan. And uh, I think he just gave me the Made in Japan thing, which Diano sings on. Uh, uh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, sure. And yeah. dude, that was I, I remember running free. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's my first goosebump. The drum fills. It's like wow, love the energy. Uh, I That's think a crazy I, feeling when you first get that goosebump feeling from yeah, listening to but, something. But you, you you can't really explain it. So maybe that's that takes you back to the real stuff and the basics. You know, you right. love it because you love it. There's energy, and I remember doing air drumming without knowing it was air drumming. You, dude, I wasn't fucking grade school. You know, uh, <laughs> right, right. It was right. maybe in uh, made in Japan. What year is that? Uh, I'm 51. Was it like so, 81 in 80 something? 80? So I might have been uh, not even uh, not even 10 yet. You know yeah so anyway how did your dad like i mean I being one. from quebec and stuff how did your dad get into country you know i got some such a kind of a that's for being a good like, question you yeah because <laughs> I, I bring it up all the time in interviews you know how mm -hmm. did the music uh, relationship with music started and everything of course that you know we yeah. had those uh, eight track cassettes and the pickup truck mm -hmm. going on fishing trip and he would sing the lyrics roughly right you know but uh, <laughs> but, but, yeah. but he speaks good english no problem you know but yeah. that's a very good question maybe but but him as a teenager i remember seeing picture of him jamming you know of course the the big elvis thing you know mm. and when i remember home we had this uh but i mean he had you know a box with music sheets mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh and he had this uh, elvis book you know like uh, you know, like those Beatle book, you know, which anthology or whatever. So, right. so, uh, so I remember not reading music yet, but being always liking being into around music books. And, you know, every Sunday would take out the box and fucking jam pretty much all the same song. Oh, he was a big fan of Willie Nelson as well. So, okay, okay. Big, big fan of Willie, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So, so that was it. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. guys kind of doing the same, like living the same lifestyle of like, you know, because whenever I think of country, I think of like American guys, like oh, down the country blue, you know, like ee, ee, you know, like and it's, it's I've heard a lot of people in other countries that actually listen to that style of music, and it's it's I don't know, it's just new for me to hear that because I don't really hear people listening to American country outside of America because they're just like and, red, right. white, and blue, and blue, like you know and, what I mean, and, like and you know, uh, Joel, is that right? Yeah, yeah, Joel. Joel. And, and you know, uh, Joel, because we have country in Quebec. Yeah. Like French singing country. And, oh, okay. and we call that uh, 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 Western. We don't call that country. Mm, so it. Western means it's going to be country music. And we have those big festivals here in, on fairs and this and that. But they're going to sing in French. And they, dude, that never clicked with me. And yeah. I'm French speaking, you know. But for and I don't even have to think about it. And, and and you know, you you hear a song you like, and you hear a song you don't like. You don't have to think about it for a fucking half <laughs> yeah, an yeah. hour. You know. Yeah. So yeah, same sense. thing. You know, the, this French, uh, the, this French country music uh, 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 aesthetic. I like to talk about music as aesthetics. You know, you're gonna hear yeah. me maybe often uh, related to that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, that sound never 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 made it because maybe that's why. Maybe it's because I grew up with the English sounding uh, when you know Willie, uh, Johnny Cash, you know, and I, mm -hmm, I kind of mm -hmm. like I like this aesthetic better. And 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 grow growing up with this music, uh, a couple years back, you know, I, I took uh, uh, for uh, for a while, you know, I subscribed to Sirius, you know, just to you know listen to other stuff. And dude, I was always on the fucking uh, country music channel. 
I, mm -hmm. I, I love it. it. It always stuck with me. I'm not buying any records or whatever, but it's let's say we drive, we're on tour when we go through a Tennessee and there's country music. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like, dude, switch the fucking channel. No, I, I, I love that sound. I love that sound. You know? So. Yeah. And yeah. Like you said, it matches the aesthetic of like, driving through the country or whether it's in quebec or in yeah. it kind of just has a it's like listening to sometimes I, I don't listen to a lot of black metal but like when the clouds are low and it's all like murky i'm like oh it works right now i'm just yeah, the aesthetic there, of it yeah there, 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 there's a, there's a, every place there's always a, a new place that can charm us and there's a there, there's a soundtrack to that 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 we like some some but i totally get what you're saying you know yeah definitely but I this agree. being said, I, I didn't grow up like on farmland or in the country or whatever. Mm -hmm. We live like in, in, in town, but I mean, it's fucking 3,000 people, you know, downtown. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. go full circle pretty quick, you know? Right. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, but music, music wise, uh, I think that was the first, very first, first, first uh, aesthetic style, music style that I encountered. Uh, encounter, can I say that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. And then, you know, uh, uh, older sister, but she's like a year and a half, two years, two, let's say two years older than me. Dude, shout out the devil, mm -hmm. uh, lover boy, the rock, mm -hmm. the good, good rock guitar, you know, the dude, she was cranking the fucking tape and we had a, 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 a common, uh, uh, wall, you know? And you can hear, right hear here, the yeah. music is so loud. I mean, but that that I'm very grateful for that. That was never a complaint in the house. Hey, put down your music, it's too loud. You you like it, just crank it. You know? My parents were the same way, dude. Yeah. They may not have liked my music, but they yeah. never told me to turn it down because they figured, you know, he's safe in his room enjoying art. It's right now. That's you a know? healthy yeah. buzz, you know. So yeah. uh, so Definitely. that's another music, you know, that I encounter. But I how old is your how much older is your sister? I'm sorry. How much older is your sister than you? My sister is like two years, and I have a younger brother. But him, he's more into he, he likes his country, he likes his jazz more, you know. Uh, okay, that, that's that's his thing, you know. So uh, I mean, nice. like his metal every now and then, but uh, yeah, but we're very different uh, music. And he, I mean, he and he's accomplished guitar player. He teaches guitar, and me, that's something I never did teaching, you know. But but hmm. we all. We and jazz, we never listened to jazz home, but at some point it just it clicked with him, you know. So we right. have all different uh tastes, you know. So uh, that's good, that's a yeah, good yeah. starting point to have all those tastes. I'm sorry, around it. I was gonna say that's a good starting point for yeah, yeah. you. And, and go yeah, ahead. I, I'm sorry, and, and, and another memory, very, very, very strong memory is a grade uh, six. In grade school and uh, uh, 1984, when uh, when uh, Van Halen uh, 84 oh, yeah. came, came out, Dude, Definitely. I played that record so much. So so that was a very very strong. That's before the, the whole Possess, Celtic Frost, and uh, even Metallica came later in the picture than Possess and stuff. But anyway, so these were the the first uh, music you know that I uh, I've listened to the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The records, so to speak, yeah. So it was mainly rock-oriented stuff that you're being drawn to. I mean, I was kind of exposed to that, but but on my own, I wouldn't say I'm gonna buy like a rock record, you know. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, uh, that Maiden record always stuck with me. And then in school, when I started uh, uh, high school, then you meet new people, mm -hmm. younger metalheads. And right. they, they expose yourself to uh, to uh, new uh, new bands, and so so that that went in the in the heavy uh, alley uh, pretty quickly. And even uh, let me let me let me remember, dude. I think I think that the, uh, the, the would you know what year uh, Darkness Descends from a uh, Dark Angel uh, came out? Because I was a big fan of Dark Angel back in oh, even shoot. more than Slayer, you know. Right. Um... Yeah. I wasn't too. I'm looking it up right now. You got it. Cool. I was gonna look uh, it up. Eighty six November. Eighty six. So you see, it's good. Yeah. after Van Halen. You know, I. You know the 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 because that was extreme music for the time as well. You know. Oh yeah. So uh, so that's a record that that 
I remember I had that. I had, I still and that had sounds that. that sounds like a, a natural progression to yeah. to be be into the Van Halen and the Maiden and stuff in '84, and then two yeah. years later, yeah. that that next upgrade of, of. But but I'm trying to remember when when is the first time that I heard the Possess? If it was in school or something, this I don't remember. But that that was that was a big uh, big thing. That was '86, wasn't it? That was when it came out, or was it earlier than that? Oh, it's earlier because uh, Scream Bloody Gore is uh, 80, 80, 86, 87. I don't yeah, know. I just know I, I maybe I always, 85 uh, ish or something. I always read the story that those guys were in high school in San Francisco and trying to define their sound, and they came up with the term death metal, you know. that's that that is the origin story of the term death metal is them being in class trying to f- categorize their music. What what a beautiful accident. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But they had a song called Death Metal. You remember? Yeah, yeah, on Seven Churches, right? Yeah, yeah, That's right. right. That's you gotta cool. you gotta as as a fan of death metal, you should at least check out Seven Churches by Possessed because. Of course. Arguably, <laughs> that that's what started it all, right? As, as a music taste for me, but it didn't make me pick up a guitar yet. But we were getting closer, you know. But that record is very, 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 very important for me. Very important. totally. Yeah. So you were talking about getting into high school and meeting new people. Yeah. Um, tell us about some of the first friends you met in high school that that were exposing you to the more extreme stuff and yeah so yeah. there's a, there's a friend w- which we uh we actually uh spoke over we're still friend today you know we uh any uh his name's frank mm-hmm. so so I, I might mention him uh, down the road a, a few times because you see uh he had a big influence on me you know and uh he made me meet other people which led to what i'm doing today but but you, you'll see so so for first year of high school you know you play smart ass kid and blah 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 and you, you want to be a little tough you know and you listen to metal so we kind of got together quickly frank and i he was he, he was playing electric guitar already i was so impressed by this you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i like my possessed already or we were close to the and, and he knew about that record too but he was more uh, a jump in the fire guy, Metallica, you know, me, yeah. kill them all, never clicked much with me. Even today, I, I gave it a few shots, but uh, me, I started more with Master of Puppet. But anyway, so you get the picture. So Frank's yeah. listening to, yeah, and his brother, uh, older brother plays bass. And we became good buddies because uh, he was drawing a lot. And me, I was drawing a lot too. So it was something uh, that we connected to, you know. And then we like to, uh, to draw like, fictive uh, band name logo and we would show like eh, eh, let's say oh check this out you know it, it i mean these weren't even real bands you know we we're just right. drawing uh band logos you know totally and we, we we really like doing that and i would spend time at his place you know I, and i would watch him and his brother play and i was like holy shit this is so much fun you know and uh and he had a very big influence on me on that. And he and, and he liked possess. And I remember one weekend, that was an important weekend because his parents were away and his uh, older brother had a bunch of friends at the house who were playing pool and blah, blah, blah. And one of the guy brought uh, Morbid Tales and uh, Hellhammer Apocalyptic Raid on tapes. And dude, I remember we spent the whole weekend uh, in his room and we were just flipping the tape all the time and <laughs> yeah. success and Celtic frost. And uh, we were like, dude, that's the shit, you know? So yeah. it was getting uh, more extreme. And I remember first time I heard ring and blood, it was at his place as well. So, uh, so he had a big influence on me on wanting to play electric guitar. And, and then when scream bloody Gar came out, I, uh, I said, that's what I want to do right away. You know, yeah. I really want to do it. So that so now uh, I I I uh, now I jump. You know, full for the full thing. So my dad had a 
at the Ovation Guitar Home, you know, which I could plug in a little amp, but I didn't have any distortion or anything. And I remember him complaining, stop, uh, stop detuning my guitar. I would tune it down. <laughs> Yeah. And then he wanted to play his country, and it was like, <laughs> <laughs> old, yeah. old flappy uh, strings, you know, and the neck, you know, I didn't take care of the neck at all. I didn't know any of that right. part of the thing, you know. Anyway, so so that's when I started to learn, you know, by ear. I remember like the Exorcist, you know, that 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 the riff, you know, and uh, right. mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so. And then the, the, the first guitar, I put some money aside, you know, and it was in, in uh, uh, third grade of, of high school. I, I say it this way because you guys uh, have different way of... Uh, right, so that would be junior, called a junior, junior year for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so winter of the third year of high school, I got my first uh, electric guitar. Yeah, yeah. Little uh, DOD uh, red uh, distortion thing. Which sounded like crap, but anyway, hey, you work what uh, what you got. Right, right. Yeah, now it's like I got two the, the two axe effects and the whole thing, uh, you know, the the boogies and everything. But you know, back then that, that was it I'm dirtied up. The, it, it dirtied the signal up. That's all you needed. Just need a little dirty exactly. of the yeah. Ex just dirty it exactly. up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and then starting to learn some. Uh, uh, I think the first riff I learned was a uh, March of the SUD back then. Oh yeah. The yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I was going to ask you because I was listening to just, you know, I was working today and I was listening to some gore guts and I was listening just on live stuff on YouTube and it the, it randomly went to SOD like out of nowhere. And I, I've been listening to a lot of SOD lately. Just I mean, that was huge for me and back in the day, like Billy Milano. And and oh, I remember meeting Billy record, Milano. Huh? Oh, yeah. I remember meeting Billy Milano. He came to one of our shows when we were on tour with uh, Suffocation. And I was like, start. I was like, oh, fuck, that's Billy Milano. Like in Austin, Texas, I was like whoa that's the that's the scariest guy in metal to me that's like this you know he's like the toughest guy in metal so yeah, was, yeah, yeah yeah but no that that was a huge for me like thrash wise like that was oh i played that record so much this yeah. and uh what else in thrash? Oh, uh, game over from nuclear assault i don't know oh, yeah. nice. so so that was yep. my thrash record i had crossover and dealing with it from dri i really enjoyed that music too yeah yeah hell Definitely. yeah so it sounds like you were really into like Danny Lilker in the beginning because we got SOD and we got nuclear assault. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but that wasn't, uh, I, I didn't get to those records because he, he had a foot in each of these bands. It just happened by accident. I right. mean, of course, I connected the dot, but but first thing first was like, oh, I love these songs, you know? So, uh, yeah. Right, definitely, right. Definitely. Yeah. So, okay. You, so you, you got your first guitar now tell us about the process and how long it took to get to a point where you're playing with other humans yeah so so i get the guitar blah 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 still drawing logos and this and that and i remember you know the the the, 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 the do you the, save uh, any of those logos still do you still have any of them oh no 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 ah, it's so bad that would have been cool those, to see. Like, like my lyric sheet and everything i i don't i just no yeah no but uh, uh, I'll come back to the drawing later. But the, one of okay. the oldest drawing that you can find is the emulation demo oh, that I drew that in those years. Okay. Yeah. We should pull that up at some point. So I, I'm I'd sorry? like to be. I'm, I'm telling these guys we should pull that up at some point because I'd like to see that just to yeah, their get second a feel demo. of what you were doing. Yeah. It, the drawing was my way to connect with them, and I became friend with with Rob and everything. So that's maybe one of the drawings from those years that you can find, you know. So, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, so anyway, so get the guitar, starting to jam, and then uh, oh, then I remember I got uh, schizophrenia from Sepultura in those years on vinyl, and I remember yeah. learning by ear. Uh, from the past comes the storm. Ah, but holy shit, man! That that was uh, <laughs> so that really got me very. Uh, serious and you know got to practice and uh, i was really uh disciplined you know right this. so i get my guitar and then my buddy frank we were we're still in high school and then he starts his band it's called uh damaged and it's uh more thrashy they're playing a lot of creator 
uh, what mm -hmm. else they were playing? They weren't playing any uh, Metallica cover. They were they were more uh, creator, uh, maybe some Megadeth. Tab, I'm like, I don't remember. I think they played uh, Chapel of Ghouls, which was on the Grand Crushers back then. You, you remember? It was like one of the first Morbid Angel single, you know, that came out. And uh, mm -hmm. anyway, so Frank got, got, he's got a band, but it wasn't with his brother, and it was pretty heavy and everything and dude me i was like uh like a third wheel you know for them i was like dude i really want to play with you guys i really want to play and then the drummer calls me one day it's like uh, thanks but no thanks it's like we're we gonna stay as a three-piece so thank you <laughs> politely but me is like nah you know yeah it's yeah like too enthusiastic it's like okay the, the, relax no we, we we're gonna do our things and uh okay and then i tried to find people and it's not really working and then i find uh uh two guys in sherbrooke mm -hmm. and then we learned some slayer some uh a few covers but we didn't write any composition together and then i get a call that uh damage you know my buddy frank and and uh, and the bass player which is which was Steve Cloutier that plays on Obscura and from Wisdom. Okay. Oh shit. So that that's from those days that we we know each other. So they moved to Quebec City and they kicked the drummer out, which is Stefan that plays on Considered Dead. Okay. Oh wow. So and and Stefan, you know, to me, you know, very good mm -hmm. drummer. So that he's the one I need, you know, to get my shit uh, together. So we met in the mm -hmm. summer of uh, eighty nine August. And uh, we started Gorguts, so that's how it started. So I didn't, I didn't play, I didn't have like twenty bands before or whatever, you know. I played with the two Stefans, uh, which which form uh, Purulence with Big Steve, mm -hmm. and me. I went with uh, Stefan that used to play with my buddy Frank, you know, and we formed Gorguts, and that was it. Yeah. That's so awesome. with, like, starting off with Gorguts, like, what was your first initial? Ooh, first initial sorry, like. What uh, was? Starting off, starting with Gorguts, like what was your first like goal? And Anthony had to restart his computer because it was freaking out. But uh, what was your first goal in, in like in the style of music? Just straight at this, you know, death metal. Death me, metal. I, I really, oh man, I mean, Scream Bloody Gore was like, I want to yeah. play music like this. And then Left came yeah. out also, and it's like, dude, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, okay, yeah, dude. even, even, uh. I don't know if we had recorded our demo yet, but spiritual healing was out as well. Okay. So, so we had that, you know, and uh, uh, on our radar, you know, so that really raised the bar because, dude, spiritual, all the leads and everything with Murphy and, and the execution, even leprosy. It's, dude, that didn't take a wrinkle. You listen to that today for all those old school death metal fans, wave or whatever. And that didn't age at all, you know. It's very well executed, you mm. know, and it, it sounds yeah. great. So, this is a good question. So, How did you so, come up with the name Gorguts? Ah, that's a, that that uh, that's a good question. Thanks for asking. It, it was our friend uh, Bob where we were uh, rehearsing, and uh, blah blah blah. So we have been, and he was a drummer, and he played uh, with uh, uh, other friends uh, uh, of mine. Mm -hmm. And he was a big horror fan, you know, Fangoria. And dude, I think at some point yeah. his, his day to day car was a fucking uh, hearse. <laughs> Is that what we say, hearse? Yeah, you know, yeah, hearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put the gasket yeah. into it. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so, so he was really into horror and, and uh, all, all those things. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I remember him telling me one day, it's like, hey, man, when I have enough time, I would like to do this side project all about horror. And it wasn't the years of carcass uh, reek of putrefaction and all. So there was a big sure. buzz, you know, for the, the gory stuff. And then he goes like, dude, I'd like to, to get this project going. And I would call that gore guts, you know. So and me, I thought, oh, man, that's a great name. And uh, one day I just asked him where we were jamming in his basement. I said, hey, Bob, I mean, I've been trying to to, to think about a name and I just can't can't came up uh, with anything. Do you mind if we take the gore guts name? Oh, it's okay. Take it. I don't have time to do my project anyway. So that's how it came up. <laughs> Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, 
I've noticed just like in your style, like going from, you know, to uh, like erosion of sanity, like it went from kind of, I want to say scream buddy glower style to like, you know, like in the pocket and to, to kind of go into like more technical and more like starting to be more riffy. Like what were the, uh, so, I mean, obviously like most metalheads, they start like an Iron Maiden, they go to, they, they step up to the ladder and they're crazy or crazy or crazy. So was that kind of the same like a uh, thing with you guys just getting like more technical, adding more like maybe we're jazzier, I mean like shreddier parts or parts of different time signatures and stuff like that. But me, what what did it for? Uh, what brought the erosion uh, aesthetic for me is when I saw uh, suffocation uh, jamming. Yep. That's. Yeah. And I mean, you listen to uh, erosion, and it's totally suffocation influenced. Totally, oh, interesting. Totally, totally. Wow. Interesting. And I have no problem saying this. You know, it's. I mean, it's. Uh, dude, dude. I, I I went I went to New York City to do interviews at Roadrunner uh, when Consider Dead came out. And uh, then Monty said, uh, or I asked him, I said, dude, would you have the phone number from the guys uh, of suffocation? Because I was staying in New York City for two days. You know, I, I went then, mm -hmm. I went down there by train and uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I had heard their record at More Sound before it came out because Scott was remixing it or uh, and, right. and, and, and it Burns, was there. Yeah. I'm sorry. Scott Burns, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, and and they had they had went in the studio like a month before us or something, you know. So and but me, I knew about their music because I saw them at Day of Death in Buffalo, which was a festival, you know, that Emulation played. Cannibal was there, and I bought the Suffocation demo there. That was before Human Waste, I believe. Yeah. And then I go to uh, we go to Morris Sound. I get to hear uh, I get to hear um, uh, Effigy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, dude, yeah, it's yeah. Game unbelievable, you know. So when I went to New York City to do the interviews, I asked really? Monty to get a phone number to 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 call one of the guy. I think he gave me Doug uh, Cerrito a phone number or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, dude, what's up? Uh, I'm Luke. Uh, hey, uh, from Garcas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we like our your record. Blah blah. I said, dude, I'm in town. You guys want to hang out? I'd, I would really love to to meet you. You know. And yeah. even today, when I like a band and they come to Montreal, I love to go meet them. I bring my CDs. I'm total fanboy. I have no problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So when I like some when I like somebody else's craft, you know, I really want to share with them. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So I really, you, guys end up, you guys end up relocating to, to Montreal? I'm sorry? Did you guys relocate to Montreal? Oh, but that was way later. Oh, way later. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah, I was doing way later, it was in uh in uh, 95. Okay, okay. Come what on, I was later. We're comment talk, on we're, was... We're talking 90, 90, uh, 91, 90, 91, 92. Okay, okay. 91. I was like hearing I was like hearing how you guys would uh get in touch with each other because not a lot of people talk on the phone anymore today, you know? And and we are old enough to where phone conversations are still a thing at least in our friend, you know, circle. But back then that was really the only way you can get a hold of somebody. And I've heard so many stories on this show and outside of this show where back at, at, at that time, it was, if you wanted to get a hold of somebody, you got to look them up in the phone book and, and, and try all the Chuck Schuldners in Florida to get a hold of <laughs> Chuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. And 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 so it's just it I, that was my comment on that. Like it, here we go again. It's a guy who was there at the beginning gets a phone number, and you just call it, and and hopefully whoever is on the other end is yeah. The but, guy. but 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 this way I, I knew I was gonna get the right person because Mon Monty gave me the phone number. I there you I go. Yeah, it wasn't before. looking up. In, yeah, 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 That's yeah, the yeah, difference. yeah. So so. Get Doug on the phone. Hey, what's up? Blah blah blah. I'd like to meet you guys. He said, "Fine." I I said, uh, "I'm getting done with the interview." I, I was doing from uh, I think it was from eight 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 to eight o'clock. It was like twelve hours over the phone interviews in Europe and cracky phone lines and everything, you know. So, wow. And then I had the whole evening to to uh, to to spare. So 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 Doug, uh, Terrence. And uh, Frank, they uh, <laughs> they came to the office uh, at Roadrunner, mm. so they came to pick me up. 
and they, they took me to uh to long island where they live you know yeah, at, yeah. Uh, at uh, mike smith uh, house okay. but there was no there was no bass player uh, uh josh was in there uh, was it josh his name i think on the first album is, is it josh mm. uh, Sh- uh, i josh. think it is Barrow, yeah Barrow, yeah or something yeah but i think it wasn't right. there i i met him here uh, a couple of years later but anyway so there was just ob cerrito frank and uh and smith so we go down it, it was at mike smith uh house and they had their jam spot uh in the basement there was a couch in front of the it was the first time i saw those mpeg uh, stacks you know and you know oh, yeah. those mpeg uh, vh, VH. Yeah. yep yeah 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 so uh and dude i think they started liege or something <laughs> i just <laughs> lost my shit I'm like, what, the like, fuck what am i doing with my little <laughs> my little riff it's like dude, dude jesus dude wow let's, let, let's go back to the drawing board <laughs> right yeah. right that those moments are key yep. moments that, that oh. i think we all experience where you just see um a band that's doing something that inspires you plus their light years ahead of you that you you feel their light years ahead of you at and the it's time like, yeah how the fuck can you come up with stuff which is so awesome oh yeah it's, dude. It's, there's not a big stroke that is bad it's 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 you see well, I'm, I'm i will so say speechless. i will I'm say sorry. that effigy and considered are like neck and neck with me oh. in reality the like the for first full lengths of bands mm-hmm. dude those two okay. are are super solid releases for b- both of those bands so i could see you being inspired and then going back to the drawing board after that you know dude and and the anthony the 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 I remember being in the room and the sound was so good. Oh, dude, it when you feel good. it in your body but, in a jam the, space. I'm sorry. I said when you feel it in your body in a small jam space where yeah, everything's but just a small jam space. We were we were like this. It was like oh, nice couch, you know, like a uh, nice house, you know, yeah, nice neighborhood. Okay. But uh, and uh, it's it's fine. We can jam at uh, at our house, no problem. It wasn't like. Uh, crusty punk but you're all but you're all contained in one area though yeah and experiencing those sound but, waves from the source but the sound and, and and it was very dry dude i remember like it was uh, yesterday it mm. was very dry very clear but but the execution they they play so well so that's a <laughs> That's kind of an important part in the equation, so it sounds good too, you know. Yep, your right, finger. Right. But, but they had Secret. something. Those super fast palm mutes and everything. I just yeah, I just lost it. Yeah. And 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 I sang uh, "Infecting uh, the Crips" with them. Hell yeah! Hard, yeah. You know? So uh, that, and and uh, just 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 a parenthesis uh, like this. Uh, we 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 just release a uh, 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 not we but a book was a, a, a comic book was released in Quebec uh, before Christmas. And it's uh, the biography of uh, Voivod, the Spice Icon, us, there's a uh, Forteresse and, uh, and uh, Anonymous. Bah. And uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in, in our chapter, you know, that tells the story of Gorgots. So you have that, that moment. It had to be in there, you know. So right. you see me in the couch. <laughs> watching them play, but on the cartoon it's very funny you know so uh... <laughs> i'll have to check that out dude there's there's nothing like that that moment when you see a band like oh you, you think you're pretty good you know like, yeah we're doing pretty good then you see another band you're like what the fuck am, why am i even here i need to like mm-hmm. i need to like read i was like consider my whole life like what's but going on i feel and we became very good friends to mm-hmm. this day you know to the you know, uh, Suffo, they could they play in Montreal, you know, yeah. hey, how's it going? Or we see them in festival, and it's like uh, it's like that first day, you know, it's just easy go, nice people, it's uh just just awesome. I kind of feel uh, like with Montreal though, Montreal is very like when we'd always play Montreal, it'd be great, it'd be huge crowds, there'd be so many people in other bands, and I was I could feel I don't know if it was a it was like a healthy competitive competitiveness in Montreal with the other bands there. 
I'm like, they kind of like kept leveling up and being, you know, oh, we're doing this yeah. crazy thing. Chris, but, you but know? I, I, w- I would say I, I totally hear what you're saying, but I, I would bring in a way one kind of inspire in a way that you, you kind of so behind closed door, you kind of want to step up your game a bit. Yeah, you know? right. So that's exactly. how I felt when I saw them perform. You know, it was so important for me. It's a healthy, competitive relation type a bit, relationship. Yeah, but at me, I, I just I, I see this as an inspira- uh, inspiration. It's a, yeah. oh no, I it's totally exciting. Like it, I never felt like in competition with them. They do their thing, you know. Yeah, and we have a different aesthetic. Yeah, you know? I think I think inspiration is definitely another word to use. In yeah, there. I guess I, like, when I use competition, it like the healthy competition mm-hmm. is what I've felt it between my peers like we've we've all been close with a, f- a handful of bands that could be used as inspiration that work could be healthy competition exactly. could be it's very like healthy because yeah. hey you and, and you know and i remember ju- just a, a parenthesis i want to i want to keep talking about that suffocation thing because it was so so dear to my heart you know when i met them but uh but i remember back in the days when the big steve be, be, you you know big steve that plays on obscura you know b- before mm-hmm. yeah we, we played together he, he had this band pure lens and me oh. i remember when i was writing erosion you know we would see each other he would come hang out at my place because we jam in my apartment and uh, i would hang out to his uh rehearsing place and i would say hey mm-hmm. dude check it out i'm gonna play uh, my new song to you and he would play his new song, his latest to me, you know. So that was this type of inspiration, you know. So it was the same thing, you know. That's how I, that's how I always pictured it, you know, uh, towards Sofo or because we we always had very very different artistic uh, languages, you know. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, and 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 to talk to come back to erosion to me it was my way. Now I see it. It was to me. It's like an ode to 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 their craft. And then people say, "Hey, why don't you write stuff like Erosion again?" I said, "Dude, you just you listen to Suffolk. It's okay. you, we don't need two <laughs> Suffolk. They, they do it, and uh, you know, I, I I I'm not even getting to the ankle of fucking Hobbs. You know, when you see him pick and everything, so it's like yeah, that right uh, hand of Hobbs, Jesus. Taba. Nah, <laughs> that means holy shit in French, by the way. Okay, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it is next dude. level shit, dude. Dude, when they when they played at the Fofun in Montreal, uh, Joel, you've been at Fofun or? Oh yeah, yeah, we played there a few times with them. With them, we played there with the stuff a few times. Oh, so yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. dude, I love that room. Yeah, it definitely. sounds good, and it's really. You're... Is it still there? It's still there, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good. I heard yeah, a rumor yeah, yeah. that was going away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I went to see Revocation this fall uh, there. Uh, oh, nice. With with uh, Crazy M and stuff, but and uh, <laughs> and Sofo when I saw them there the last time it's like uh, i just dude i just lose my shit and dude i make sure i'm i'm in front of obs yeah me too yep and i i'm fucking uh uh i don't like the word watching i'm like oh, <laughs> absorbing yeah. yeah and if you if you blink it, it's it's like a second that you just missed of the show dude. and you're pissed that you blinked <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's no, anyway, that, that when we saw him on the the last uh, Suffo Atheist run, I, same yeah. thing. Posted up right in front of Terrence, and no matter how much I tried to pay attention to everybody else in that band, uh, I my eyes just go back to default stare at Hobbs, dude. He is, dude. The amount of guitar player that this man inspired, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and myself included, you know, it's uh, and 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 and. and and, and and we don't talk enough about Cerrito because he was able to follow the the oh, yeah. the, oh, fuck yeah, dude. The, the guy with glasses, if you know what I'm saying, you know, <laughs> dude, Cerrito yeah. with those giant hands and it's yeah, fucking giant, you know, six foot something and and fucking dude, Pierce from within live, hello. Uh, I never got to see it, dude. Oh, I, I never. Dude. I was too young, man. I but I've I had I had this old VHS tape. Of, of suffocation opening for deicide like on the uh once upon a cross tour it was like 90 it was like piercing within and in, in that and i would watch it all the time and shit and like but suffocation had broken up at that time it was yeah like, right like the, so, when we all got into it they were already like a year past well yeah. me personally they were a year past despise the sun but uh, but but in my artistic journey they were so inspirational so don't 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 no no wonder dude mm-hmm. 
I Frank's, was doing Frank's the reason why I started doing death metal vocals, dude. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. they're very, very inspiring. Of course, package, dude. It's, just, it's, just, it's uh, I mean, we don't talk like with with praise like I'm doing right now. I, they must have done something right, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh well. man, but you know that's what I like about art when I when I just can contain myself just talking about it, you know. So yes. That's why we do this, you know. And that's why we do this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Luke after a show like seeing Ob's performing, I mean, yeah. uh, suffocation. No disrespect to to Derek and uh, all the boys. I mean, and what a fucking killer lineup they have now. They do. God. Very solid. Very, Very solid. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me, I come back home after you know I have like hour and a half, two hours driving from Montreal, and I'm my heart is so light. And it's it's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. Right. So so when I came back to do those interviews at Roadrunner, that was a big leap, you know. But uh, <laughs> so and I was meeting the boys in at Fofun because we were playing with the Dead Horse. Mm -hmm. We had a show on the on on that day, and I remember, you know, I think they, they already had line check or something, or somebody came pick me up at the train station or whatever. And it's like, guys, I, I, I had the same uh, 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 body language. I said, guys, I've seen a UFO on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the it was the no bullshit face. I mean, right, you, you, right. You gotta see this life changing yeah. situation. Hey, oh, yeah. like fuck! I just saw fucking something crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not gonna believe me, but <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, uh, so that that's and dude, man, I was so and I and I remember when we hit the road with Cannibal and Atheist in '92. I was so that and, and that evening was so uh, important for me artistically that I remember. So when we hit the road, I think it was uh, January or February of uh, 92. I already had like uh, almost uh, half of erosion written. I had like four songs. I remember wow. a hotel room and playing riffs from a path beyond premonition. It was the fourth track. I already, already I was writing back then, you know, so so they were very 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 uh, inspirational so that's that's why erosion sounded like this yeah yeah killer dude oh, that's, that's awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah. luke have you ever heard of a, a group called spawn of possession from sweden of course yeah oh okay well dennis the drummer he sent, sent me a message specifically today on facebook and he's like uh, i can even read it but he was like oh man he, he's like so excited that you're on tonight uh, what did he say <laughs> he's like dude just wanted to say that i'm really looking forward to lemay Gorgets yeah. is one of the most important bands to spawn a possession for sure. Uh, so cool that you're going to have him on. If I can stay awake for it, I'll listen. But he's in Sweden, so it's like nine hours ahead. So, okay, or okay, eight okay. hours, something like that. Oh, that's know. nice. So, yeah, this is like three o'clock in the morning for him or something. Like yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out, Dennis. Yeah, that, yeah. that was, I mean, they were, I mean, spawn a possession. I mean, coming as a, you know, a younger guy into the game and hearing them in 2002 or 2003 when I first heard them, when I was first getting death metal, I was like, what the, this is like a new it's like one of those level up things you know like, mm -hmm, the bands mm -hmm. are doing this now and then okay, it, it, correct me if i'm wrong but me the 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 because i don't i don't know their album well i know i have one of their record here i couldn't uh, uh, there's like cabinet. cabinet it's cabinet that, that i have yeah okay, okay. Cabinet. which is which, that's the first that's the first one. Oh, it's the first yeah, one that's my favorite they, of all time but it's, were were they at the same time when necrophages came out and everything yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so they, to me i see them more in, in 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 this team aesthetically is that would that be right oh and the necrophages like a technical yeah. death metal yeah yeah yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah yeah totally i would say they're more classical influence than necrophages though would okay. you guys say i would say they're more i mean like as far as like uh mm -hmm. I don't know. Gorguts, I would say, is more of an influence. Like it feels like it's classical mixed with Gorguts to me. If I had to like sped up a little bit, <laughs> so yeah. I, I was listening to Erosion. It's like you speed that shit up. I was like, oh, it was like yeah. I, I mm -hmm. to hear the Spawn influence for sure. And also the like, oh, like you like started that, like that fast. Oh yeah. Oh. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like wow, you know. But I mean, yeah. dude, to us, like, I mean, I'm, we're gonna say this a lot tonight. But basically, to me, you're talking about suffocation in those early albums and that kind of stuff. Like even before Pierce and stuff. Like for me, it was like, dude, like 
yeah effigy but it was also like considered dead and erosion dude especially like for me like effigy and erosion particularly like those two would be like interchanged like just oh, like that's nice thank and you. like erosion just always just blew my mind like thank just you. the all the rhythmic ideas and stuff it was like almost like how cynic came in with death stuff and like took it in this other direction like you guys yeah, did yeah, not yeah, with yeah. like the suffo sound it wasn't just all like like or i mean suffo is just in incredibly diverse but you guys took it in this whole other dimension mm, you know? thank you <laughs> so, definitely huge respect and, and, of course you know and then, I mean, later on, so moving past erosion, oh, I mean, then, yeah, then it just gets yeah, Ob Obscura is next, right? Is yeah. that the next one? Yeah, after that, yeah. So, so like, yeah, that's good. That's, I mean, I, what Casey just said, cor uh, uh, corrosion, me. <laughs> <laughs> considered dead and erosion, corrosion, corrosion of Most obscurity. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Um, those oh, those death metal titles. Those I were know, those were my first together. introductions to uh, Gorgas, and that what really solidified my love for the project. And then Obscura comes along, and I, you know, knowing what I know now, that you were writing that material right after Erosion. Like, there's a '94 uh, tape that you guys did with a, a lot of that material from obscura already back in 94 yeah. and that fucking blows my mind dude because i got the the that i don't know if it's a bootleg or not but it was the demo compilation and then comes lividity do you remember that yeah, yeah. that compilation okay yeah, yeah. so i got that and not everything from the 94 release is on there but i think there's three or four tracks from that tape on there and you you realize the, i i love hearing the beginnings of like i love listening to demos I love to, pads. that's how i see them exactly yeah. and and it, yeah. it's it's maybe i love it because i already fall in love with the final product and then i get to see how what the beginnings of that and you get to kind of feel what the progression was to yeah. get it to what it was when you guys finally did it, which was obviously because of uh, contractual stuff that you guys were going through. And that's why it took so long for you to get that album out. But it, it really does blow my mind that that material was already being um, put together in 94. At, at the end, at the end of 94, if my mind's right, we had like 90, 95% of Obscura all written, done. Wow, dude. And Jesus. we were sending tapes to record labels because we got dropped from Roadrunner because the only tour we did for Erosion, I'll come back to Obscura right after, mm -hmm. but ju just just so you get the, the, the musician in, in, in the picture as well. So because uh, erosion was a bit delayed because of roadrunners they had some business you know to 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 straighten out erosion comes out a bit late but in just before it came out uh, stefan the drummer sylvain guitar player they weren't they weren't into the band anymore they 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 they, they, they weren't in a good mood or whatever so this they they decide to quit the band like the same week Wow, and uh, but before that, we had changed uh, Eric to Steve Coutier, which played on Obscura and From Wisdom on bass. So Steve just moved to Sherbrooke, you know, to start jamming with us. Then he's pretty much full circle with all the songs, and then Stefan and Sylvain quit the band. And he's okay. like, "The fuck, man! I just moved here. What the fuck? What the fuck?" <laughs> I said. I don't know, man. I don't know uh, what to tell you. You know, it's the, their thing. But out of the blue, I don't know if it's a phone call or a letter that I got. Uh, uh, you have an offer to go tour in Europe uh, with your new record. And dude, we've never been to Europe. So we're like, dude, uh, I'm not going to miss this. I'll go for free. I don't care. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Me and Big Steve we were good, very good buddies. We we're hanging out all the time, blah blah blah. And I said, uh, "Dude, um, 
uh, I just got this offer to go play in Europe. You want to come with us? You know, I can teach you the song. And uh, he said, yes, no problem. So we had, we tried this youngster drummer that was in my area back in the day. So he was very nervous about, and dude, he was fucking crushing it, but he didn't have the confidence, you know, to, to, to right. go on tour, you know, he, 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 he was, much, I mean, much younger. He, he was younger than Big Steve and myself, you know, we were 20, 22 or something at that time and me and okay. him, he was maybe 17 18 oh know. wow okay confidence confidence is huge if you're yeah, yeah like that's yeah, a big yeah. deal people don't talk about it much but if you have to go out there like you get put on the stage like all right yeah. do it like it, people change and yeah. i was like uh, gislain was his name i said dude you're fucking killing it mm -hmm. and we, we sound so good with you you know dude i remember we were playing with their flash we we're playing uh condemned to obscurity uh we had a couple in the can you know and he was fucking crushing it and then one day you know i kind of come up to to rehearsal and he was talking to steve and he was all uh, bummed you know i said man we're not angry at you you know it's okay you know yeah, you're yeah. not feeling it mm -hmm. but we had to turn around quickly to find someone so mm -hmm. i gave a phone call to lee from uh monstrosity mm. and so lee says uh yeah i want to do it perfect so uh had some money go buy a plane ticket for lee so let's say let's say we're on a fucking uh monday <clears throat> and lee would take the plane on the, on a thursday or something then out of the blue <laughs> i get this phone call from uh, steve mcdonald he's in quebec city and dude there's no facebook there's no nothing how the fuck did he heard that we didn't have a drama i don't even know the guy and 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 his band was more of a hardcore thing metal mm -hmm. whatever but i kind of and and but steve cloutier bass player mm -hmm. heard about him because he he stayed in quebec for a while and he, he saw him play and he said dude this guy is fucking killer but uh we'll see you know if he can uh pull it off that i said dude i really want to try I really i said dude i'm having a plane ticket for lee and he's coming over uh at the end of the week let I'm coming down tomorrow, no problem. I'm gonna be there. I said, dude, you're gonna make it early because I gotta cancel that that plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I show up at the fucking bus station, which was like 15 minutes walking from my place. Mm. No Steve McDonald. I'm like, Tabarnak, where the fuck are you? You know, <laughs> no cell phone, no nothing, you know. So yeah. and then oh, and then I see him at the end of the day. Oh, he had to go to the pawn shop with his fucking VCR to buy a fucking bus ticket. You get the you, you get the character, you know. Yeah, yeah. Very sketchy, very. Uh... So so he comes to my place and I said, dude, I, I really gotta watch you play now, but I gotta I gotta go to that uh, that uh, traveling agent uh, before he closes at uh, five thirty to to tell him what the fuck I'm doing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So he fucking nails a uh, fall from grace from Morbid Angel right in my face. He plays the whole thing. And Big Steve and I, then we go in the kitchen because we were, we were jamming in my apartment, you know? Mm -hmm. So we go in the kitchen. We look at each other. I'm like, did I heard that right? He said, dude, this guy is fucking ripping, man. I said, okay, it's him. Go. Yeah. So I go cancel the, the, the plane tickets. I said, Lee, no, no hard feeling, whatever, but we got our guy. Mm -hmm. And dude, we were up to the tour. We had like 10 or 11 days. So in the morning, yeah. I was jamming with Big Steve. I would show him a whole song. In the afternoon, I would go, uh, I would sleep at my, let's say my girlfriend's place, whatever. Uh, McDonald was sleeping in my ap apartment where we jam. I get there at 1 p.m. I would get... A whole song together, structure wise, and explain him all the beat, and we and you would play the whole thing. And then in the evening, we get together all the four, and we get one song. So we got one song a day. So we got to practice, and and dude, we're talking uh, that was erosion shit back then, you know. So it's a lot of a, uh, you know, but but Big Steve was very good because it was in 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 our uh, day to day thing to play very fast picking back in those years, you know. So we had the toolbox. To learn the, these songs uh, quickly, you know, right. and uh, dude, we had like uh, if uh, if I if I'm right, we have like a uh, 
do three days to practice as a whole band. And we played the first show in Europe, and it was a erosion and a few considered dead songs. So and how'd it go? So, 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 I'm sorry. How did that go? Oh, we had a few good shows, but it was, dude. Some nights it was like ten people, and then, but nobody, you know. Yeah, but I'm saying like when you went out and played that first live oh. gig with that lineup, how did that go? Played very good. Nice. Like we played together uh, all the all the all, all those years. Nice killer, but, but you know, McDonald and the Cloutier and Big Steve, you know, they're they're it's in their fucking skin. Like, you know, you when you see a guy like Chewy, you don't question it, it it's like he's got, yeah, it. oh, yeah, for sure. Dan Mongreen, you know, and he's uh, amazing, but he's a very special talent to me, you know. But, yeah. but you know, like McDonald, you explain him a beat and he's nailing it right away. You know, when I practice with Patrice, it's like, okay, what do we do, you know. That's and, a uh, that's that's I mean, playing with people that you get along with is one thing, but not all. But playing with people that you get along with that can actually execute an idea when it's spoken, because we all know what it's like to be in the rehearsal studio and and being the guy who's like, I have this idea for drums, and then you just air drum it and like or mouth it, you know. Yeah. And and it can you can only translate your idea so much before it just hits a wall, and then to have a guy to take it and actually be like, "This is what you're thinking," and and saying, "Yes, that's what I was thinking." That's a great, great thing to have in the rehearsal studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. And True. you know, uh, and, and for my share, you know, being a, com a composer in the band, you know. So having, uh, drumming-wise, having a, per, uh, uh, a percussion toolbox, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. You're going to pull out any tool you need, you know. We'll, uh, just just explain me. I'll put my flavor in there, and it's going to be fucking... Uh, there it device. is. And you, got, and you have also the... Uh, the, 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 uh, you have the, uh, the surprise element in the equation as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, dude, I never thought about that, but that sounds fucking killer. Right. It's when you add another brain to the mix. Exactly. Or multiple brains. That's the, the magic mix. of writing music with, with good friends. You know, it's, it's. Because th so th there, we, we constantly sabotage ourselves without even knowing it. So you can get yourself into a funk where you're only have, you have a peripheral type zoned in vision of something but that is actually blocking <laughs> out other things that could be bringing that or making that better so accepting ideas from other minds that are in the room is is something that can make something that you had no idea would be coming out of that session of course. or whatever you know but that's the amazing part of surprise. Even today, when I write with with Colin, Kevin, and Patrice, you know, it's the, uh, you know, that's why I, I mean, we'll come back to 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 them later, you know. But the, but that's why it's important for me that when I come with a new song to the to the 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 the, the, the that that we're gonna work on it together, you know, all my parts are written and everything, and I'm like, dude, just do your thing, and me, then. <laughs> When I open an email and I receive a new song with new guitar track and bass track, and I'm like, oh, that. that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important because you have their uh, their their language, their their their, exactly. their personality. In, yep. in the, you know, because now if I want to do a record on my own, and we have all the technology for this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to be with your buddies that that. Uh, and and we 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 surprise each other, you know, with with ideas and and the, and the and what a great excitement that is. Oh, it is, dude, and it, it's also could be instant inspiration for you to totally um, flip your idea on the head and realize that this is actually the way that this is supposed to go. That's You're why we do that in 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 square one. Anyway, if if you strip everything down, I think. That that uh, 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 how do you say that? Uh, uh, yes, surprise, but uh, 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 
I'm sorry, you know, that you like you That's like okay. your, your mate takes you artistically to a place that you're like, I would have never pictured that like this, and it sounds fucking amazing, you know? So yeah, yeah. It's like gold, you know. It's a, and and to be able to accept that because there are a lot of guys that can't accept um yeah, but from elsewhere besides themselves. Do, do a you solo know? project. Yeah. You you get superior drummer, you get all your you can do two thousand guitar tracks if you want on your own. <laughs> right. But you need to so even to come back to McDonald, you know, I mean nothing wrong with, with Stefan. We, we we did our best, you know, when we did the record. I'm very proud of this. But when we played the erosion stuff with McDonald, it had like this, you know, like this Mike Smith kind of well mm -hmm, sat mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. uh, Slayer beat there. Yeah, he definitely he sounds like he, he beats the shit out of his drums. I'm sorry? I said he definitely sounds like he beats the shit out of his drums. Yeah, but he 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 he, he made. I mean, when we toured like the, the, that erosion tour, he made he made the composition sound. And also, how do you say that? You know, uh, you know. Let's say uh, you write a new song with your band, mm -hmm. and you play mm -hmm. it the first evening. But if you play it live for fucking two months straight, when you're coming back. And you play it in the rehearsal room. It's gonna everything kind of not loosen up, but everything's kind of sitting at the right place uh, uh, mm. where it should be in the music, you know. So that's that's what happened with the 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 erosion material, you know, with McDonald. And again, don't get me wrong, you know, I don't want to misrespect, you know, to my buddies, you know, when when we did the record together and everything, you know, and because because uh, when we did the record. I'm, I'm fucking uh, losing my mind because because I'm super happy with, with what's going on, you know. But I, I'm just right. talking about it with a couple step back, you know. So to get the the the, the style of McDonald, you know. So uh, so dude, it was like natural progression, you know, with him. So you had the obscure lineup right there, you know. But yeah. without writing a song yet, you know. So but, I, one of my questions that I definitely wanted to ask you was, um there is an obvious um, influence on considering and erosion, even though erosion is starting to already play with more experimental um, writing and, and getting more technical with the structures and all that stuff. What was it that happened with you to change your, your, songwriting style to start developing songs that would have been uh, end up being obscura yeah because that, that is that it's a big that's a big side step even though i will say casey called it i was going to say this tonight there's there's always a gore guts essence throughout the whole entire catalog even in obscura even though obscura is such a, a standout um release from you guys and i just really really want to know um as the main songwriter of this project what was going on in your mind what was influencing you what were you listening to that that kind of made that nudged you in that direction to go as experimental as an album like obscura well, yeah but that that's a good uh, question anthony but uh, as people wrongly associate, you know, with Obscura, I wasn't the main songwriter for that record, actually, because it was it was the first time with Coutier and Hurdle that it uh, I, I was welcoming. And, and again, don't get me wrong, no disrespect to my, my buddies, you know, that when, when we, we did consider it and everything, it's a, it's it's part of the of the the, the, the path, you know. But when 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 uh, uh, Cloutier and Hurdle, uh, I, I'll call them by their family because they're all Steves, and even the McDonald, they're all Steves, you know. Right, 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 right. It was the first time that I had the 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 the, 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 the main songwriter that they used to be in their previous bands. So they okay. were wearing the same shoes that I was wearing in Gorguts, but in their band before we got together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. And me, that's at the time when 
uh, my mind started getting towards more classical music. Uh, when when we did the the tour for Erosion in Europe, I remember I took uh, I just started playing violin in those years. So my mind was more uh, absorbed by wanting to understand classical music. I was listening to a lot of Baroque music back then. That that's so. But it doesn't mean uh, fuck the band and uh, just write your shit and I'll be there. I'll show up for rehearsal and that's it. No, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I have my two mm-hmm. cents to say as well. But but I, I'll explain to you why it ended up sounding like this. But but I just want to make clear because it, it's it's it, it's it, we 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 need to give to uh, to the man what 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 belongs to the to 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 the creators. You know, it's I mean that weird sound. It, it didn't came up from me because. I, I went to study classical music. A lot of people associate Obscura Sounds Weird because I write cl- a classical orchestral music. It's a bad uh, association, you know? I mean, okay. I'm not saying, uh, oh, they didn't get it. I mean, it, 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 it could have been because of this, you know, but it's not because of this. And I like to say, hey, I started, <laughs> I, I went to study uh, composition at the conservatory in 96, mm-hmm. but Obscura was done in 93, 94, oh, done finish comp- so yeah that all written. that so, association with the composition and all that kind of stuff it's, it's wrong it's wrong wow it's wrong but but it doesn't mean that we're not passionate about composition right. without having later on in in my own trail you know the 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 the, the classical music toolbox in hand but 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 it, it wasn't because of that that obscura sound like this and okay it's important for me to 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 say it right so when we came when we came back from the tour uh the erosion tour in 93 so that was spring blah 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 and we had agreed that big steve would go back to purulence you know and and do his thing and thank you buddy we had a great time all right and big steve at that time was jamming upstairs my place Mm. so we would hear them practice and they would hear us practice you know so me uh, i had started writing one or two songs even before the tour so we were kind of working on this but it was kind of erosion part two but nah, not too good mm-hmm. and then a month later after the tour big steve uh no 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 not even his buddy guitar player in his band uh, gets to my place and he's all bumped out. I said, "Dude, what's wrong?" Well, oh, it's not too good. I said, "What the fuck?" Well, uh, Big Steve uh, is gonna come play with you guys now. He just left the band. Oh yeah, mm. I didn't Damn. know. That, you know, and we were very close buddies, and he he just told his bandmates because he, he thought about it when we came back from the tour, but he didn't tell me, "Hey, I'm gonna come play with you," but I need to talk to the guys that know. Right, right. Didn't see it coming at all. You know, so, hmm. oh, yeah. Well, it, it was I mean, obviously that experience. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was saying obviously that experience made a big impact on him to just, you know, say, "Hey, oh, you this... mean the tour and everything?" What's that? You you mean for Big Steve the tour? I don't I don't. I yeah, don't... when you when you said that Big Stu, Big Steve left his other project and said that he was going to come. Oh, yeah, you yeah. said that was was that before the tour or after the tour? No, after the tour. Yeah, yeah. Because so that's what I'm saying. So that that experience yeah. of going on the tour made him realize that he wasn't doing what he wanted to be doing. He, he was maybe not stepping in the right shoes, you know. And he and he, he he enjoyed the chemistry that we had together, even knowing from square one that when we're done, we're done, and you go back do you do your things like today, you know. It, uh, today it's common sense people play in a band and they play in three bands and it's all good you know but back right. in the days it was like oh you have one band you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we actually have a, a mutual um mentor and we call him our death metal dad mike hamilton he uh-huh. had that same uh uh he's the drummer of deeds of flesh actually we're, we'll talk about this later too yeah, 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 yeah. you and i are actually on the same album uh-huh. i don't know if you know that <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. I also did yes. guest vocals on that yeah, Deeds yeah. of Flesh album, so that's yeah, another yeah. key thing yeah. in my uh, career. So, that I'm like, yes, I'm on the same album as Luke Lemay. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, so 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 we come back from the tour. Big Steve leaves his band, his project, 
and uh, we started playing together. So, saying again, talking again, you know, we we had we had our we had a big uh, conversation about you know the suffocation aesthetic, erosion aesthetic, and all the influence it has on that. And even after erosion came out, there was a lot of bands popping out, you know, in this style, and we're like, nothing wrong with this, but uh, I mean. They're doing great. They're doing this great. But who are we? Us, you know. We 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 want to we want to we want to create a, a new sound. So, so we we told to ourselves. We did some kind of manifest. We said, okay, we cleaned the drawing board here. We're gonna start a record. So we we imposed a couple rules to ourselves. We said, okay, we're gonna take a week off. Every time, every time we start, we, we, we want to start a new song. So we take a week off from each other. We're going to come up with riffs on, on in each on our, uh, on, uh, on our own, mm -hmm. but no, no, uh, how do you call that? Is it scan beat or Slayer beat? What's the right word to say it? Yeah. I mean, sorry. yeah, both I think is right. That yeah. I would think so, of. Yeah. So no, no scan beat allowed in the room <laughs> no no scan beat no more tremolo picking done <laughs> tremolo uh, i'm sorry <laughs> no just kidding though no. inside joke oh, yeah tre some people say it's tremolo some people say tremolo I don't know. <laughs> tremolo it's not right but it's funny no no see it's picking rapid i'll say it in french so nobody can argue <laughs> You Thank said you. it. You, you said it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he so, said it right. So, so no more fast picking, no more uh, scan beat. So we're gonna either have a uh, very slow heavy beat, or we're gonna have fucking blast beat like uh, Sandoval, you know, like on Covenant, and uh, mm -hmm. these were the the records back then, you know. Right, right. So these were like the big lines, uh, uh, like uh, how do you say that? Uh, these were like not boundaries, but rules. Right. I like the the word rules better. Totally. So now you you kind of paint yourself in the corner, and you need to reinvent yourself. But make if but take it take it this way. Now with a step back, I think about it this way. When when you don't question yourself or impose yourself. To not you to to get out of you when you impose yourself to get out of the comfort zone, you have no choice to you need to please, you need to surprise yourself to say, ha, ah, check this riff out. I can't wait to take this to the rehearsal room mm -hmm. next week. Ha, ha, ha. Who's who's got the who's got the Joker or whatever in, in, in his sleeve, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's healthy uh, not competition but you want to surprise your bandmate you know so so it needs to 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 you, you force yourself to reinvent yourself but what i wanted to say if we if we we, we would not impose these rules to ourselves maybe we would have found every now and then a riff that kind of sounds like obscura but you kind of find it by accident so it takes more time to reinvent your sound, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm speaking from my 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 experience, you know, be, be, because we clearly said none of this, none of that, none of this, only this, only that. So, uh, so that's what uh, that's what made the sound of Obscura. So, so check it out. First thing we write is a rapturous grief, and you got more morbid angel kind of. You know, carcass, discanting kind of influence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. so fast picking, but it's still uh, 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 at the early stage, you know, it's like, right. It is know, more traditional. I'm sorry. It's more traditional. Yeah, but we, we know we don't want to go there, but we do it not in a, in a comfortable way. You know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it takes time. You know, you, you don't snap and hey, okay, I'm gonna write nostalgia tomorrow. You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, but we wrote uh, 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 Rapturous, and then uh, La Vie Prelude, and then oh, Carnal State, and then mm -hmm. what was after Carnal State? Uh, I'm sorry. 
maybe subtle buddy or something like that. And now, now we're somewhere else. So to me, yeah. with this way of working and this uh, aesthetic obscura is more, is in a way the real first Gorgoth record, so to speak, because wow. this is more of our uh, trademark. Right. Yeah. More of the end game. Exactly. I'm sorry. More of the end game. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But if we wouldn't have, again, I'm repeating myself, but if we wouldn't have uh, imposed this to ourselves, dude, you, you don't, you don't write, uh, you don't write subtle buddy after orphans of sickness. It's, it's, it's not even close. Right. You know? So, and I, and I remember at some point it was fun because check it out. We said, okay, one more rule. When we, uh, I mean, no, no, two more rule. We need fucking wasted. Dude, we smoked so much weed back then. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, That's what's dude. up. Uh, I, I got to talk uh, quick, uh, briefly about this. And <laughs> Yeah, please do. I want to know what the and, weed and, was and like dude, up there and, at that and, time. And, you know, you know when, when at some point, you and dude, we were always fucking crusty broke, you know. Oh, we, yeah, yeah. A couple bucks for weed, but no money for a tuner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we're like, dude. <laughs> dude, like we said yesterday, dude, we really need to tune before smoking because we're like, <laughs> for fucking minutes, you know, it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, and we were smoking with knives, you know, on the on the stove, you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah, know, knife hits, yeah, yeah. Tunnels with, with fucking two liters of pop, you know, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We call those oh, gravity, gravity. You know, a lot of weed in Obscura too, you know. <laughs> that's what's up, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh and uh oh yeah, so that's what I wanted to add. So so imagine, you know, a couple doobies in, in the hat, and now okay, everybody's got some new riffs. So what we what we decided to say, it's like have you guys ever experienced that? You know, uh, Joel, you play guitar, is that right? Uh, guitar and bass, yeah. But, you, you know, a string instrument. So, you know, yeah. you get to the room sometimes, a buddy can play you a riff, and when you look at <sighs> it, you're like, dude, it's fucking killer. But after you listen to it, you know, for 20 times or 50 times, it's like, maybe my perception was a bit influenced by how it looks when it's played, you know? But what if yeah. I just listen to it, you know? Mm -hmm, definitely. So, so that's why we didn't want it to, because, dude, Big Steve had always those, like, where the fuck did you call that? Those weird fingering, very, very, uh, 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 not si I don't like the word simplified, but very, always. Uh, e e e e it's like economic. It's like Econo very. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, economy. Exactly, exactly. There's no fucking no 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 strobe light needed to to add to the riff, you know. So mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so so we we decided uh, that uh, we are not gonna look how the riff is performed. So we listen to it uh, for the first time. So we have a more you know let's let's let, just let the ear work, you know. So this way we're not influenced by the the technicality or whatever that wasn't important anymore, you know. And yeah. dude, that had a big impact also because it doesn't mean because let's say myself or or or, or Cloutier or Big Steve would come up with riffs. Always the best riff would make the song. You know, it wasn't like, oh fuck, you didn't take my riff this week. No, it's just and 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 and, and all the riffs that didn't make into the song, we wouldn't save them to do something else. We start from mm -hmm. scratch all the time. And dude, the first song, Rapturous Grief, it took couple weeks you know to to write it down mm -hmm. and all the other song get together because we were always jamming monday to friday always okay in the afternoon Jesus. and evening and uh how do you so how do you jam in the afternoon like do you have jobs that allow you to leave and, and jam in the afternoon or no, what's going on? like me you know i would itch hike and go at my mom's restaurant in the morning and do the, the rush hour lunch you know and uh -huh. I, I and i had a ride home you know with some salesmen on the road that can because i Dude, I had checked 20 years uh, in, at the beginning of the band, you know, so uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. drive back home. So, any, but there was always a way, you know, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we had little jobs here and there, you know, but we, we would jam. That's when I devoted myself, you know, really jamming Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. and, and on the weekends, we would write in, in, in our corners, you know, and uh, 
and dude, and we improve our skill very much, you know, uh, jamming all the time like this, you know, together. Uh, I mean, as, as, as a unit, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, uh, and, and, and so beside Rapturous Grief, I think all the other songs we, we wrote within like two, three days, wow. all the time, all the time. What, but with this, with this uh, uh, method, of, with this approach of, of, of composition that we impose to ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. right, so that right. opened a lot of new doors, you know, which we would have never found if we stayed in our old uh, uh, shoes, you know. So yeah, uh, 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 changes happen much slower instead of say, okay, done. I don't know where I'm going, but no, no, yes, no. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So yeah, wow. So, so I'm That's very good. proud that we, uh, as, as young uh, uh, composers, you know, together that we decide and we stick to it, and it, it and it paid off, you know. It it really uh, definitely. Uh, and yeah. to hear to hear that now is going to make that album. I mean, I already, I have a spiritual connection with Obscura. It's 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 one of those um, albums that really grabs a hold of me and just takes me for a journey and i get that hypnotic trance like situation where because i am a person who loves to listen to albums from front to rear front yeah. to rear front to back and uh <laughs> front to rear it kind of just sounded weird when i said it like that don't but, worry i'm french i don't get much what you guys are saying <laughs> i don't get it either well, it's usually front to back, Lisa. Yeah, to back. Yeah. I'm, no. I'm, here, I'm no. speaking like a mechanic. I'm speaking right. like a mechanic. The front of the car, the rear of the car. But, um, the rear of the front. <laughs> front butt. Anyways. Okay. Okay. Riff. Yeah. Riff. Come back to the riff. Come back to the riff. <laughs> It's gonna God save us for the rest the next five minutes. No, no. <laughs> I can't. Just... Now I, I kind of forgot right. where I was going with that, but I was just saying that you know, Obscura is one of those. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Okay, so Obscura kind of like rewired my brain to listen to the uh, dissonant and atonality of music. You know, um, I there's a lot of bands that kind of a uh, Gorguts Obscura prepped my brain for, for me to come across them, which would be like death spell Omega and, and uh, sleepy time gorilla museum. Like there's these like dissonant atonal aspects of that band as well. That kind of do seem to be speaking the same language that is uh, Obscura and, uh, you know later gore gut stuff as well well even like um, collins bands you know like dysrhythmia or uh uh behold the octopus and stuff too yeah, totally. yeah. Even though that's like later on but you know i don't know it's all the same kind of spirit it's like or it's yeah exactly. yeah and and it was also it just another one of those albums where you you listen to it and you you enjoy it and you don't necessarily know why you enjoy it because you're it's so new takes to you to a ears. certain place, you know, which you yeah. really put your finger on it. But the... as and as a young metalhead, you don't really know how to understand that or or articulate why that happens, but something is happening. And then you realize later on down the road when you because I like to what I call shelf albums for a while, these these real um potent little packs of art which is these albums i like to have my fill put them back on the shelf and stay away from them for a long time so they can recharge for me when i finally come back full circle to them and and gore guts is one of those bands that i have that that uh relationship with over the last couple decades and and this week has showed me again that i did wait a long time enough time to <laughs> reconnect with everything that i listened to and uh, i was just reminded again that what i just said that obscura it was one of those albums that i came across early enough in my life to um 
get my brain ready for the later greatness that is dissonant and atonal music. That's it. And and what yeah. uh, another thing I'm really proud of, uh, of this record is that uh, there's no bells and whistle. If you listen carefully, guitars aren't doubled. And uh, w- what you hear on the record, the way it's performed live, it's it's the it's the same. There's no studio tricks or or, or anything. You know, you can tell it's organic. It's very organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if there's something awkward or textural, it's been uh, pr- uh, 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 produced from a contact with the instrument. You know, it's not uh, some kind of a uh, of trick. You know, or uh, you know, uh, yeah. So, like, like the 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 the, the inverted uh, opening riff. That that's what that's something I wanted to to carry on in wisdom. You know, so when it starts, you're like, eh. but mm-hmm. there's no studio trick. There's no so it, 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 uh, 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 texturally. You know, it's about ah, oh, how does that sound if I hit here or you know. So there was a lot of uh, exploration, so to speak, and and mm-hmm. then after you found. And uh, an element which pleases your ear. Okay, how can I maybe integrate it in a riff? But 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 that's a two-edged sword, you know. Because if you go mm-hmm. down that road and it gets fucked up just for the sake of being fucked up, it needs to be. You need to keep on your radar. You got to write a heavy song. I mean, mm-hmm. catchy. We'll see. Well, that's another question, but. It needs to be interesting and keep the the, the listener uh, 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 focused and captivated. You know, mm-hmm. that that's another thing that I wanted to mention tonight too is the the whole um, tension and release of listening to music, and how if you use that correctly, you can bring the element of surprise a lot more intensely. You know, if you keep people in a tense state for a certain period of time, then where you bring the release is the calculated place where you're going to bring excitement, you know? Yeah, that's that. I I, I couldn't agree more with what you just said, because me, like uh, it happened, you know, uh, not that I work with younger bands, but the uh, younger local bands, they would come and ask for some advice or my, my little two cent, you know, on their work and everything. And I, I'm being always being uh, respectful. And uh, but that there's something that I, that's a rule that I impose to myself writing a new record, you know, but that's something that I ha- I, ha- I, ha- I I pointed out to uh, younger bands, you know, like just starting out and this and that. And sometimes, you know, I was like, oh, it sounds like every song starts starts the same, you know. So mm-hmm. I would bring as an example, let's say you read a story, you're in the book, and every chapter starts the same way. You're going to get lost in the fucking story. At some right. Point. You're going so to get bored. Record, to me, like... it's the same thing. So you need to have, ah, oh, that surprise thing, you know. And, and, and uh, oh, we, we've been there. So maybe we can come back in three songs, but let's let's start differently to it. That brings also character and personality to each composition as well, you know. If right. you have, you know, people all looking alike and all all, all dressed the same in the same room, oh, oh I thought you were uh, such and so, or such was a... So it's the same sonically when you write music, but sometimes, like a, a youngster, you know, the, uh, their attention won't be uh, through these details, but that's something that I had... Not that I don't like that. I had to point out, but I, I came up. Uh, uh, I pointed out to 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 uh, uh, younger musician, you know. So, but that's mm-hmm. something that I keep on on the on the top of the list. Writing new music. Oh, oh, I didn't notice, but that kind of starts like the other beginning. So, no, that's not. Uh, it's, right. it's, it's a conditional. No, I'm not going to use it. You know. So hmm. uh, that that peculiar being that particular is a part of the equation of what makes a band like Orgut. So, (laughs) (laughs) so, all right. So from Obscura, did you guys tour that record at all? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what, what the reception. uh, The first tour we did uh, for Obscura was with Nile, uh, uh, Nile, Cryptopsy and uh, Oppressor. Hmm. So 
that was was it 98 i think it was fall 98 would you say that oppressor is like one of the more like underrated bands that kind of went under the radar I agree. for a lot of people I agree. I, I, they never really hear people, hear people talk about oppressor but i remember hearing their old stuff and being like wow it's fucking yeah amazing. they were very 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 good musician but for some reason uh mm. like uh not at the forefront even like us in the death metal thing you know it took a long time you know to to mm -hmm. to, to uh yeah. to uh to get more notice sort of it's like a cynic like a cynic like a band like people yeah, later that's on good, that's a good point actually yeah they're yeah, like yeah, they yeah, hear yeah, it yeah. and then like at the time it's like doesn't really hit them at the time then yeah. later on they're like oh fuck this was the reason why all this other Dude, stuff happened yeah you remember when focus came out oh yeah it, i mean i was i was 10 but, yeah, <laughs> but that wasn't like the, the i don't like that word but the, is that right to say it wasn't like flavor of the day you know yeah yeah Can definitely we say this yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because I don't want to be disrespectful, you know. Oh no, 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 no. no, no. no, no. We've actually yelling. had Paul on, and we've talked about that, and it really is something that was a decade ahead of its time, and you kind of see that. And it took about ten, a little over ten years, for people to realize what Focus really was, you know. And that's actually, I think, that's a kind of a badge of honor, even though they were going through all that shit and dealing with it not being a band that people can get, but just to be able to later on be like oh i made something that now it, it, people regard as Resonate, something you know and uh yep yeah that's uh that's a nice compliment you know to their compositions you know mm -hmm. but but it, like us you know when we uh when, when be, be, before we released obscure i remember we we had like 10 songs done mm -hmm. yeah and, and uh so we're jamming we're jamming we're jamming and then uh in those years, uh, 94, 93, 94, uh, 95, we uh, we were always going in the, is uh, Chicago Midwest, is, do we call Midwest? Mm -hmm. Yes? Definitely. Yeah. So, so Chicago and Detroit, though, those, uh, those cities, you know, we, we always get like a phone call a year or something to go play to go play a show. So all so that kind of bring the flame again, you know. And dude, from ninety three, ninety four till ninety eight, we didn't wrote a single fucking riff. We just we show up to the rehearsal room and practice obscura. Wow, that's all we did. And so we did that. 93 94 and then go to chicago we we became friends with the guys from oppressor and uh, one of the guys got knows this guy that's at this label and blah 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 hey they heard uh, your new stuff and they they really like it and we're like oh eureka mm -hmm. so then we we go meet them the next day after the show and yeah 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 then the the, the label uh goes bankrupt they close Fuck. and then bah, what the fuck are we gonna do so we send a cassette here and there and uh, people don't even uh, uh write back yeah yeah so we're like what the fuck you know so so maybe that's that that's i think that's when in 94 then we said bah nothing's happening so let's write two more let's write music again and then uh, we wrote uh nostalgia and obscura like this but Jeez. but in the first 10 songs obscura and nostalgia weren't there so so we we wrote them out of boredom saying oh that i'm not nothing's gonna happen you know so why not write something new you know and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then we wrote those two songs then finally then we go to chicago and there's marty that had olympic records he came to a show at the i think i believe it was thirsty whale is that right does that ring a bell to any of you guys thirsty whale Why? the thirsty whales whale mm. whales Whatever. it does not anyone in the chat maybe yeah small mm. club in uh, chicago okay uh, okay on a sunday night uh, not much people uh anyway and then mm -hmm. he comes to you backstage uh, i really like this and i want to sign you guys and uh he's the one that put out obscura dude we would we would have signed with uh, anybody's grandma back then i mean it's like dude we want we, we just want to get it, the fucking shit out you know right right yeah yeah and yeah. also in the meantime mcdonald just left the band dude 
he, we moved to Montreal in 95. I was living with Cloutier. Mm -hmm. uh, McDonald was living with Big Steve. One day, Big Steve come back from work and fucking McDonald packed his shit and left. That doesn't call anybody. <laughs> wow. Jeez. What the fuck? God. And then that's why we we uh, then we found out uh, Patrick uh, Robert that plays on Obscura, and uh, pa Pat, you know, uh, it wasn't his element, uh, you know, no disrespect or anything. And then we had the tour offer to go to come back to the oppressor thing. And then we call back McDonald and do McDonald came back and it's like he never left, you know. We fucking click, click, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. And so okay, so was that the only tour situation that you guys had for no, the record? No, no, no. So ninety eight, we do the Nile oppressor cryptopsy thing, and I think was it ninety nine? What was crypto? What was cryptopsy? What What did they have out at that time? Not so vile. Not right? so vile. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It oh, was yeah. Done so wild. So we did two tours with them, and then we do another one. I I believe it was ninety nine with uh, Vader headlining. Nice. It was Cryptopsy again. Yeah. Us and uh, awesome. Who else? We were we were four. Uh, okay, uh, Gorkas, Cryptopsy, Vader, but there they, they was somebody else. Oh, uh, I think it's the tour with Dying Fetus. Well, I saw you on that tour in two thousand one. Was it Vader on this this one? I don't know. Oh, on the, oh, I'm sorry. On the on the tour, I saw you with Skinless. I think it was because yes, I looked it up. Skinless, yeah. you're right. Totally. Yes. It, it was at the Whiskey in no, LA. No, but but but, oh, but was was Skinless on From Wisdom? I think so. Oh I man, know. I don't remember. But it was definitely yeah. Wisdom to Hate tour, and it was yeah, yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. Chewy right. on guitar, yeah, because and, Chewy was there, yeah. and it was with Fetus. Yeah. yeah, but but for Obscura, we did another tour after with Vader, the same kind of a uh, circuit, you know. So, uh, but it it was good, you know. Big Steve had posted some videos. Cause you remember back in the days, uh, you know, when you played the whiskey, you could buy a VHS, you know, of your performance. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Uh, that's when you see Earthly Love, and there's a couple songs, you know, from the whiskey. You know, I have the Terrorizer shirt there. Nice. So that's, that's from the yeah. Isle tour. Yeah. Killer. Yeah, 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 that was my first time seeing you guys. I was uh, 18 years old, uh, and uh, it was incredible. Yeah, I just turned. I, I was looking at the date. I found it online. It was like March 25th, 2001. So, I was like, gonna I say 18. Yeah, I was just gonna say no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't Fetus. remember what band you know. I mean, like, yeah, I can remember yeah, exactly what day it was. Yeah, no, I, I looked it up. It was like funny. I was like, oh, that's interesting. But I was like asking David, who's on the chat, and I was like, dude, when was that tour? Because like. We saw Cannibal Corpse at that show. And David, you're talking about Berserker. I'm pretty sure Berserker was at the Cannibal Corpse show. Oh, Berserker. You're totally right. Or did they play the Berserker? Show? Uh, oh, us, uh, David's right. Oh, shit. Well, uh, who else? Damn, nailed it. I thought I was. Fetus. Shit, dude. Crazy. <laughs> was Crypt in? Berserker was one of those things. Like I, just, I couldn't get in. I couldn't. Nothing ever clicked with me with Berserker. What do you guys think? But that's where I, I, I met the guys from uh, Alarum, you know, the Australian guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah they for sure. were, yeah, they yeah. were the fucking stage band for the Berserker guy. Wow. Which was, what, which was a solo project or something. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I, it, I, it may be. But actually, now that you brought up Alarum, that's actually a the, cool. The bass player, the curly hair, he had the, you know, hairs like Chewy, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was mm, he was okay. playing in Berkeley, so that's where we met. Mm. Ah, okay, we've yeah. actually played with Alarm Casey. We played with them oh, at the yeah. town, dude. Right, right. That, that sounds familiar. Was that that was the Necrophagist night? Was it or was it no? Was it was it yeah, Malevolent no. Creation? Dude. It was no Malevolent was uh, Carnivorous. We played with Necro, and Alarm played that night. Uh, or no origin i'm mixing that up again that was malevolent was alarm was sick if joel was here he probably yeah, would I remember this really be, good. Yeah. Uh, correct da no, david's uh confirming yeah, yeah. it was, was alarm necro yeah but i'm trying to remember the other bands that were on the bill that night uh, he says necrovigious alarm arsis arsis yes animosity for sure was on that ah 
Yep, that was cattle, cattle decap. I thought I'm, I thought cattle about decap, it. dude. That, yeah, that was a huge fucking yeah. show, dude. Shout out. Was it a festival? <laughs> I know, no. dude. Well, we the, the 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 pound uh, Luke was yeah. um uh my metal sanctuary as a young kid. It was it was a uh, year foo foo fo- how do you say foo foofs? It was foo fun. So, so it was, it was like, yeah, yeah. It was your. It was ours. It was ours. Joel, you're talking about. Of the pound, it's it's called. It was in San Francisco. It like, uh, but foof, but it's our foofs. It was our foofs. Yeah, in San Francisco. It yeah, was where all thing. the underground metal tours would come through there. And I think we, uh, I, I think we've played there. This way, pound. Yeah, I feel like you uh, may have, dude. And uh, we, we played San oh, Francisco. Yeah. Uh, times. Pound, dude, mm-hmm. sure. Always had great shows in uh, Cali, uh, Frisco, uh, L.A. It's mm-hmm. great, great. California very, loves very metal, for dude. For us. Like, I saw you guys open for Death to All. The, mm-hmm. Oh and, man! At the uh, yeah downtown San Francisco, I lived like a couple blocks away at the time. It was crazy. Yeah, Electric Night. Um, man. Saw yeah. you with Suffa. Uh, saw you with Carcass. Couple different. At the, yeah, at the ballroom there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's a good oh, venue. Man, I like. I, I, I feel so lucky to have uh, being able to to have the. Uh, to share my music on those special evenings, so to speak. Exactly, yeah. dude. And, yeah. and yeah, being able to meet you that night, dude, and you for you to remember me, that was pretty crazy. Of for course, you, you always have the hat <laughs> Is that right? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah, you were. I remember watching your interviews because you were doing solo interviews back in the days. Is that right? Um, no, it's always been with the the this podcast. I've been doing okay. interviews. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I'm confusing with some other. Uh, yeah, but uh, but uh, anyway. no, but either way, dude. We yeah, we we talked uh, at the Regency, and you were very nice to me, and and I I've always wanted to sit down with you and have this conversation. I'm glad I'm here, dude. Which we're having. <laughs> yes, exactly, dude. And I, awesome. Now I'm just fanboying yeah. out again, dude. All right, get me out of fanboy. So now we're in. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, we'll stick things on a side note, like uh, so. I always hear stories about you. You're so you do woodworking and you do cabinets and furniture. So yeah. that is that's your full time job nowadays, right? So like, I mean, oh, it's my, been on and heard? off for uh, almost twenty years now. Okay, so yeah, what got what... you into that? What got you into like? What got you into that? What what, what was the start of that? Uh, even before playing music, I always like you know building stuff, and I, I love tools, and uh, I love tool the band too. <laughs> <laughs> so I like working yeah. with yeah. tools, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so, so long story short, uh, two thousand one. After from Wisdom tour cycle, which by the way we still need to talk about. Yeah, so when, uh, but uh, briefly on the woodworking, just to, to get you in the picture, you know, so uh, when the From Wisdom uh, tour cycle uh, finished, me, I was heavily in, uh, t- taking dope in Montreal, and I had, uh, you know, uh, very depressed, and uh, my life wasn't healthy at all, you know, and then uh, I meet my girlfriend, which I'm still uh, with today, it's like 21 years now. Oh, uh, congrats. And uh, so I decided to move to Montreal to relocate in the area where I grew up. My family's here and everything. Perfect. And um, and then after the tour, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, uh, Cloutier and I, we kind of tried to kind of get together to jam again, but it's we 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 are all we're 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 in different places. Him, not that we we don't get along, you know. So, right. Uh, and we just didn't see each other at all after that. So, me, I said, you know what, music, I'm I'm done. I'm just, my heart wasn't into it, you know. Even sold one of my uh, guitar cabinets, you know, and I'm like, yeah. And out of the blue. I said, oh, me, I would really like to carve, you know. And uh, so on my 30th birthday, my brother-in-law gave me a nice uh, set of uh, chisels. So, so get the chisel. So one day, as I said, fucking small town here, I go in town to do some Xerox or something like that. And I'm talking to the lady there. I say, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to start carving, you know, just got a set, blah, blah, blah. They say, oh, there's this council at the bank, you know, when I which i'm uh, which i work uh, at you know um they finance a skate park and they're looking for someone to make a sign for the skate park would you like to do that i said sure 
and I never did that. And then uh, I did the the sign for the skate park, and it fucking snowballed, and I carved the sign for all the fucking businesses in town, and even the welcome sign to the city on the highway. I did uh, the whole thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that that's what I've been doing, and then you know, starting building furniture, kitchen cabinets, uh, you name it. You know, like me, my 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 studio furniture, I build the whole thing to put all the, the rack mounts and stuff. You know, so uh, total custom shit. You know, love it. And uh, now this this past summer, I just move, I just relocate my uh, my shop. Like uh, for a couple of years, you know, my buddy here uh, uh, where I have the studio, he, he's got a workshop too, and he allowed me to use his shop. But now he, he kind of you he needs a space more. And mm -hmm. I was doing big projects, so dude, he, he's at his own place, but he doesn't even have the room to 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 put a fucking screw in the board. You know, I, I'm taking right. the whole the whole shop. So I said, dude, I'm 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 gonna get another shop. You know, so. Uh, so uh so, so when i when i build my man cave can i get a custom chair built by you a chair i'll here? be happy to write anthony man's cave sign you know uh, to put on the wall dude that would be amazing uh, dude how rad would that be to yeah, have a chair so that, that's that what uh, just an example you know we do 25th uh, anniversary of metal in quebec and there's an air guitar contest, okay? <laughs> oh, nice. And, and uh, I got asked to carve the winner's uh, uh, honorific, uh, how do you call that in English? You know, it's, it's like a, a trophy or like, it's a, like a, a trophy plaque that, or... that you hang on the wall. It's like a, a plaque. How a do you plaque. Say? I think yes. we call it a plaque. Yeah. Yes. So it's a 25, a 25th anniversary of metal in Quebec, air guitar winner, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, so it was carved by a metalhead for a metalhead, you know. So, uh, so it was awesome. So I had a lot of fun uh, doing, it. and it's really nice. And I, I put some metal strip that I that I hammered on the anvil on the sides, you know. Dude. So it's a nice, a nice object, you know. So, uh, so that's what I do. I'm gonna yeah. be, I'm gonna be hitting you up about awesome. that, Luke. I'd love to have that, dude. We'll talk about that. Yeah, but you, yeah, but. Uh, you see how much time it took for the podcast. Much <laughs> good one. I'm kidding. I'm just pulling your leg. It no, reminds me of the, 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 the so we had a we had an episode with our with our buddy Obi, and um, doesn't like was it Chris Barnes that does like bathroom tile or something? No, dude, it's Obi who does it. <laughs> oh, Obi does it for okay, okay. Sorry, I fucked it up. Oh, you work construction? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, yeah, our buddy Obi, like, uh, he does uh tile work. He actually does some really sick stuff, dude. He showed me <laughs> you, like, you like hire like someone into your kitchen and just Chris Barnes like shit. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. cool, like uh, this past no. summer, uh, you know, the 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 place, the town where I grew up, they contacted me and uh mm -hmm. they asked me to redo all all the signs for the town you know so it was it was nice you know to to do it for the place where i grew up and everything so uh, uh i was really uh I, I was proud of this you know so totally but i like this as much as music that's why you know sometimes with the band you're many years you don't hear anything from us now i'm in fucking sawdust mode and yeah, then yeah. When I get bored of the fucking table saw, so, okay, I gotta start jamming again. So, like next week, you know, uh, Patrice and I are going to New York City to see Colin and Kev. You know, dude, we haven't jammed together in six years. Wow. Oh my god, it's so, awesome. That's good, great news. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to see them. I was very excited. I know we're we're skipping over a little. We got to go back onto the timeline, but I was very excited to hear that you guys were coming back once again, yeah. getting back in the saddle. Oh yeah, man. That's it. And I, every time I'm like, the fuck? Why why you waited all this time? You're you're having a great time. But I think that's know. healthy. I think actually, Luke, I think that's healthy. Like to like take a break, <laughs> like go and do your thing and like do your other craft, and, and then you come back to your, your main craft, and it's not you don't get bored of it. Like you're like it's a me, new re but, resurgence to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, to me, you know, I don't have like a main craft neither, you know. I like I'm as proud as the sign on the highway that I carved that, uh, you know, the new record. I, I, I had as much, I mean, as much fun. It's, it, to me, it's uh, it's as healthy artistically yeah. to exactly. do this, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's not like, well, it's just fucking carving. No, no. No, 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 no. Because no. there was a time I was fucking bored of the band too, you know? So it's mm -hmm. not healthy. At that, That's exactly then, what I'm saying. Put the yeah, guitar yeah. in the case and, and just do something else. So yeah. 
So it's not like, oh, it's a safety net for me. Say, I like those two things. I mm -hmm. like the woodworking as much as uh, uh, as, but, as making a record. You know? And so, I was, as was, humans, though, just as humans, like you get, like you can do the the best thing in your life over and over and over again, and it will get bored. Humans will get bored of it. So you need like a break from it, and yeah. then go back to it. And, and I know? think that the woodworking is really meditative. Yeah. In it, in when you're just sitting there and you're carving a piece of wood. That's that's a good point because you can have your mind not on autopilot, but because sometimes I sit down, you know, when it's been a long time, I didn't do any composition. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? It's it's like, how did I did that again? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a door which is not to to me. As, as much as I'm very proud of the music, you know, we, we, we craft together and everything, but it, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road to, 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 uh, but once the mindset is there and it's like, oh, it's done. What the, uh, how did we do this? You know, yeah. but, but the woodworking, it, it will be different. You know, I, I'm confident when it's been a long time. Okay we'll get back into it uh, put the apron on and fucking go but the yeah. music yeah i find it more rigorous and i was i was listening to it i was reading an interview with a uh, american composer i think it, uh, what's his name again anyway and he said people think sometimes because you've been doing something for 30 40 years you know it's like okay bring it on right it, it's not my first rodeo and everything but for him you know and I, and I, and it kind of resonate with me you don't want to you don't want to repeat yourself mm -hmm. you don't want to so i don't know i, I kind of find it uh, harder you know and more difficult you know yeah but uh, but once the door is open it's open you know composition it's something really uh, not bizarre but uh, it's not okay put this piece into this piece and then you screw that here and then blah, 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 numbers you know and uh, right right there's something which you can put your finger that's where the magic's from also that's where like oh, we have that that awe moment you know so uh, it's not a, a formula that you just stir and then, then the song happened you know? no and there's a lot of people that want to hear you say that right now too dude like the fact that you've been this far down the road and things are still difficult so if you're out there and you're hitting a point in your creativity you've been doing it for however long you've been doing it and you're feeling that that angst of not pushing your craft forward or whatever it doesn't matter how long you've been into it or what you're it, you're always going to hit that wall at some point but you're going to have to learn how to climb over it you know yeah, and that and, and then rule number one, you, you got to surprise yourself, you know, if otherwise yeah. it's gonna, it, it, it's not gonna hold up, I think, you know. There's actually a good box. question for you, for like someone like you, like what would be like, you know, you, you're in a box musically, you're like in a box, you're stuck in the box. What would, what would be like your words to tell someone that you wanted to get out of the box? They want to try something new. Like how, how did you go from okay, I'm just going to do it like this to like trying avant-garde with like different things and, uh, and trying to like get, escape the box. From my experience, I would tell them to, to do like when we, 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 uh, we decided to impose those rules when we started to write Obscura after erosion, mm -hmm. you just force yourself to go down the road, which even get out of comfort zone. Okay. Mm -hmm out of comfort zone and and no worries i mean your 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 technicality toolbox gonna follow you but it's like it's like it, it's like forcing yourself to learn a new language like in, mm. in life you know? yeah yeah it's not comfort zone but after a while it's like okay i got the more vocabulary so that's what's gonna happen musically again it's it's my 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 from my my experience with a step back you know it's like you got to give yourself time to create yourself a new language, but get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So that would be my advice, you know, Definitely. but which, whatever, which comfort zone is, it's different 
for for different people you know mm -hmm. definitely to me like uh, when it was like riding the erosion I'm, I'm not saying it was easy but you know i had to keep up technically and everything and again we didn't start riding obscure because we were sick of uh, fucking practicing picking i love that but mm -hmm. you know if we don't want to repeat ourselves and erosion is fucking scan beak and, and and fast picking so that these are the first two things sorry not gone. gonna see you anymore yeah so what the fuck we gonna do now yeah yeah that's a yeah so, just cut two things cut things out that you're comfortable with just cut exactly. them out exactly so and now now right music. You open yeah. your ears and do exploration mm. on your instrument and <gasps> what just happened sonically that's interesting oh what about oh. what if what if what if you know yeah so, giving uh, yourself nothing to lean on dude yeah. exactly no net yeah wow no safety net yeah 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 That's and then advice. first thing you know after 10 songs you created yourself a new comfort zone <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah, and true. then and then if you want to keep going then you have to eliminate that part <laughs> which is because wow. the essence of obscura you know those open string dissonance uh -huh. clusters you hear those on colored sand you hear yeah. those on pleiades yeah you hear those on the uh, on the uh, on the wisdom yeah. But, but they, 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 they're down there. This new road, because Pleiades sounds sure. more contrapuntal and more layered than obscura. But the essence of the aesthetic is there. That is, that's the word that I was thinking of today. Is just there's this essence that really has never left, yeah. no matter what you album more, we've talked more, about. Yeah, you have more vocabulary. It, 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 I, I think the language is the best example I can, since music is a language too, and you can express emotion and everything. When, you know, you start a, a band, you start your first composition, you have a, a more, uh, it's like me speaking in English. You, you understand me, me well, but you can totally hear it's not my main language. So when you start composition, you go with your landmarks and with what, oh, this in my book, that surprised me. This, I think, you know that resonate with me so mm -hmm. you go you go on down this alley and then you you uh you create more words more language and then you can write the more vocabulary you have let's say as an author the more vocabulary you have you can write more complex poetry so it's the same thing with music the more complex it gets with 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 your language as a composer now you can more you can write more complex uh composition and, and you mm -hmm. and you ha and uh, and it's and it feels clear for mm -hmm. you you know yeah. so i think it's the best uh, parallel i can uh with, with, with spoken great. language that you don't know it, it's to create yourself your own vocabulary you know but again it, a... art was always like this if it's painting in renaissance or whatever everybody right. kind of emulate his neighbor but then up oh, they find their own voice but that it's a dialect time. it's a dialect right yeah but it takes time yeah yeah you know? that's just gonna show yeah exactly yeah and then there's nothing wrong like uh, you, you you see how enthusiastic about when i talked about suffocation but this is amazing it's like i found a new gem what can i say with this language then it yeah. made erosion yeah okay so you, you see but uh, yeah definitely totally jesus yeah no, i love it love that okay so let's get back on the to the timeline a little bit so obscura you toured that record a little bit and then you wanted to stop playing music went to the woodworking for a while and then um tell us about deciding to get ready for from wisdom to hate which is i mean I, that album too it just blows my mind every time i listen to Thank it you. Thank you. It, it's such oh, yeah. a, a a perfect oh, yeah. like harnessing oh. of everything that Gorguts had done up to that point, and really like just encapsulating everything with a new twist, right? You know. I mean, I remember like I had that on CD, like in the late or I mean, God, when did it come out? Two thousand. Two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. I had like the CD. I had this like in my van like and i was like you know I, like i told you i was like 18 and i had like the cds in like this little thing like right below like in the little you know cubby and like the thing and it was like like i always had that cd or like one of those like i remember 
<laughs> and all the other ones. Isn't that like that's crazy? Like the but, remember like how much an album means to you. It's like you remember yeah. where it was placed in your car. Like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> right here. It's like down there. My <laughs> mine's <laughs> literally like Man. twenty feet from me right now. It's in a <laughs> oh nice. Like, yeah, did, oh, yeah. yeah, I think you still got the. I don't want to go digging for it because I didn't. Yeah. I didn't uh... <laughs> now it's like all in my Apple Music play. You know, I got it all added. Yeah, to, oh, gotta yeah. buy copies. I know. Well, I, <laughs> I, still, back hey, then. I still do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I bought one back in the day. Yeah, it's like I bought. Like I, I tell everyone, I bought a car kind of recently, and like they're like, "Oh, there's no CD player in here," and I'm like, "What the it's fuck?" Like, there's, yeah, there's not, it's like it's gone now. It's not what, even. What a... is you guys? What is you guys' favorite format for a record? Uh, I mean, uh, probably. I mean, nowadays for me, and I'm I'm late to the game because my my dad was playing records when I was a kid, and for me, when I was be- becoming like a, a person into music i was buying cds so i had cds my little rec i still remember my little cd player in my little corner desk when i was a kid and, and putting it in there and the whole you know ritual of putting the cd in and pressing play and the clicks that it made and everything but um i mean nowadays it's 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 just streaming because it's so easy i could just hear it super quickly <laughs> i thought you were gonna say vinyl i thought he was no, gonna vinyl, vinyl, too. vinyl was i mean no, i still yeah, collect them i collect i have I'm vinyls all back person. here yeah. I, have, I have a bunch of vinyls but i don't have I just I'm lazy now because I'm you know American. Uh, yeah. And uh, I've, li- I've listened to enough audio files that have uh, invested in their record collection and their record player and you know, all that stuff and yeah. And they make a very valid argument in vinyl, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it, the the concept always blows my mind i've said it so many times on the show it just blows my mind that a needle can be dragged across a imprinted piece of plastic that has specific uh, very very unique tendencies with each record to where it it translates to no it's way it's over it's over his guy yeah. on, I'm, I'm actually staying way sober on this episode we got luke lemay on right now guys come it's on a joke. it's a joke relax it's um it's like at least when he's drunk that, that 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 <laughs> the caverns that the or canyons the microscopic canyons that the needle follows to make a certain that sound noise, just, just like blows my mind it's dude. preferable over people that like you know for and now that we are on a vinyl tube joel and casey like yeah yeah we finally have a vinyl record now our music is imprinted into a piece of plastic again like i would love to see the microscopic wavelengths of my voice or your drums or to my your... to my argument of like i know i listen to it on spotify a bunch but i do like the sealed piece of artwork i want i want the i want the fucking vinyl like i want to just hold on to it and look at it and be like whoa you know so a a record uh, uh, at the end of the equation you know if if you gotta how can i say that if you gotta own uh, uh, a final uh, result of of your of your ideas and, and 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 your thoughts and your composition you know vinyl it's a record that's what it is you know yeah but yeah more cd guy yeah i always like cds uh, better you know even for um for more ambient music i don't think it's it suits the the, the vinyl it suits the, the, the this uh, this uh, this type of uh, aesthetic you know well mm-hmm. but uh, but me i really like cds i like the layout i like the format i like the 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 the, 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 the quality you know but yeah. vinyl it's beautiful it's beautiful mm-hmm. object yeah you know? yeah what i was saying with vinyl i was really just that was what blows my mind about vinyl i really only have a few records mainly cds is the way that i consume but if i can go into my library my physical library pull the cd out look at the you know read the lyrics while yeah. i'm listening to it look at the production notes and read the the band's thanks list like that yeah. was really what listening to an album was all about for me and i found yeah. out about so many bands just reading the thanks list as a kid just like going through like what are, okay it's my oh, favorite yeah. band let me Same look here. at the thanks list and like go buy all yeah. those let's buy those you know yeah. so mm-hmm. it was basically like um it was like a shout out for the like the yeah the nerdy metalheads going like fuck this is yeah. amazing i need to find oh, out yeah. what they're listening to yep yeah it's like a damn mongrain i mean with a uh, spawn of possession um so their first thanks was martyr 
and I was oh, like, yeah. and I was like, oh, okay, number one, thanks, Martyr. We're buying all the Martyr now. <laughs> Get all the Martyr, dude. <laughs> and 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 you know, I wish that the um, more like uh, record stores were more prevalent. They're not as prevalent, obviously, because of no, that, me, because me, of I'm... what I'm telling you that I'm doing is streaming. But yeah. um, which I wouldn't. I would if I were to choose, I would definitely get rid of the streaming for the record stores of so going into the record store, walking in, holding the artwork, looking at it. Like there's like one in town now. It used to be like seven and there's one now, you know? Yeah, there, there was this small uh, record shop in Sherbrooke, you know, that's where I, I would I would uh, like every, every time I would, you know, I get Disabelle all the time and I look for new bands and uh, mm -hmm. a new records coming out. So I was like, ah. I would call GF, you know, at the store and say, hey, uh, the day comes out, you know, put a copy uh, on the side for me. I'm going to pick that up. But uh, anyway, so, and he closed his shop. Uh, when was that? Mm. Last summer? Midsummer? Oh. So, like, for instance, like the new Catatonia records coming out soon, you know, but that about that order, that from Europe and everything. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I I really enjoyed uh, you know going to the independent shop, but they're not around anymore. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know it's it sucks. And by the way, the Tabernock, I got a message or a comment from uh, our buddy Joe Lester from Intronaut. He Too said, much uh, swearing? "Yeah, he's all he's all he's all tell tell Luke Tabernock." <laughs> that's all he said to say and i'm like i'm always said it about 17 times already so you're already too late to the party you know hey dude dude when i started jamming with colin and kevin you know that's the first word they, they learned from me i say that yeah, every yeah. second <laughs> <laughs> i love it man i love it so all right we didn't did we get into we didn't really get into like so for wisdom to hate like you're was it was the the idea okay we went we we focused on certain aspects of creating music with obscura now let's bring it back to kind of the more death metal aspect of things that's a good point yeah because i remember mcdonald was saying ah oh, i mean i like obscura but I, I we don't have the death metal vibe you know so we kind of i think on uh, on the wisdom we we kind of found on the fence you know no compromise for experimentation sound so to speak but it's more death metal mm -hmm. traditional death metal you know like, right uh, like inverted to me it's it's maybe one of my favorite song on that record it has everything that obscura has in, in its toolbox but it kind of sound more death metal but if you pay attention to each riff it's not traditional death metal but mm -hmm. the spirit is kind of back in the room, don't you agree? That's right. Yeah. Right. No, that's yeah, exactly definitely. what, that's I what I we I, we wanted to capture. I right? was saying to myself, like, okay, what was the element that was kind of taken or put aside for Obscura, and that would be the death metal aspect yeah. of the project, and then you get to from wisdom to hate, and we're we're gonna we're gonna add that back in, but maybe not as big of a percentage. So, so may, maybe uh, my intention worked because that was the feeling you had when you heard the record. Exactly, exactly. Right. You, you, it, it conveyed exactly what you wanted it to. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's one example of somebody who understood it. Boom. Totally. <laughs> yeah. That's right. No, and 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 you get that like, because that that really is uh, um, to ask a listener to go from considered to erosion okay we've taken you now down this path to erosion that is a step in a different direction from considered to erosion and then it's a it is a very big step to obscura you know and for the ones that still let you hold on to their hands i'm not letting go okay keep going down this path now it's like okay we showed you the boundary is now let's let's tone it back now let's take it take you and, and i still i'm the i'm the one that's like don't hold let go of my hand dude i want <laughs> i want to keep going on this journey you know but it is like oh, oh you've taken me to the edge now okay now let's scale it back okay yeah yeah ooh, ooh, but, right. uh, i was... heard that a couple times you know uh even Maybe from my own perspective, you know, if you, if you look at the discography with a step back now, uh, wisdom kind of sound like 
that 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 could have been the record that that could have came out be, made more sense in between erosion and obscura, so to speak. Right. Don't you agree? I do agree with that, but yeah. it, I don't. This is, I don't necessarily think it should have been. But there. it depends how. But you it does fit it, right. It does fit right inside there, and and uh, if you want to look at like a progression, it, w it would definitely still fit smoother there. progression, so to speak, maybe. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's out of place. Maybe. It's not out of place for me. Yeah. No, I think it's perfect. Like aftermath. Yeah, it's like we went to the edges yeah. of sanity and now we've we're able to come back and tell the story after the storm you know it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. Oh, yeah and i remember you guys playing and you know in 2001 and like just being like blown away like like we, we had heard your stuff we like 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 we're already fans but i had just started getting into metal and death metal especially and so i just was like so blown away you guys were so good like all that stuff like all that I, I don't know what the set list was exactly like and, and but everything was so good and i remember like chewy just like i was like what who is that like hey, that guy is incredible hey, and he was i got i got i got to, I got to say uh, something about chewy uh when uh, Daniel, you know the yeah, first time yeah. He, that he came to my place you know because check it out for first thing first we, we we were uh we were booked to play a milwaukee uh, metal fest uh, in the summer and then uh, Big Steve had left the band, blah, blah, blah. So I called uh, Pierre Rimiard, you know, that uh, he, he, he engineered Obscura from Wisdom and uh, Colored Sand, you know, Colin mixed Colored Sand, but uh, yeah, anyway, he's a guitar player from Oblivion. So I called Pierre and I say, hey, dude, yeah, yeah. It would be fun, you know, if you could play a show to uh, with us. So he said, "Dude, I have no time for this, you know. I mean, no, 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 no offense, you know. But there's this guy you should uh, you should call. It's uh, that uh, Dan Mongrain. He plays in Martyr. It's in Martyr. Hmm. I, that kind of rings a bell, but I, I didn't know that. So he said, "Oh, here's his number. You know, check it out. Check it. Check him out." Mm -hmm. So, so we go play Milwaukee as a three piece. So we do the show. No, 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 we do our thing. Good. Coming back from Milwaukee, I, I give a call to uh, Dan. And uh, Dan said, oh, I've listened to Obscura. I'm not sure if I am. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll go meet you in Montreal. So one evening, he comes to my place. First time we meet. And he, uh, and he, and he kind of made his mind. He said, yeah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to play... Uh, I'm going I'm going to play with you, you know, I kind of cuz cuz he told me uh, with very honest, you know, he said, well, first time I heard Obscura, he said, I didn't know if I was uh 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 um uh, uh surprised by the the composition or I had disgust about it. It's like what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> So we have to fucking sleep on it a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, and, understandable. But but uh, thankfully for me, it was on the good side. He he went for the the artistic approach. <laughs> yeah, right. So Definitely. Uh, so uh, so we come to my place one evening. So hey, we meet. Blah blah blah. Okay, we start uh, learning song. So we sit face to face on chair with the and he had the little uh, music stand, you know. And dude. I think he learned like fucking four or five songs from Obscura in one fucking evening. Wow. Jesus. Let's say yeah. let's 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 say four for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, I remember he goes like, okay, play that riff. And he was fucking tabbing uh eyeball. Visually. Yeah. Okay, I was curious about that too. So how, how do you teach guitarists? Like so you don't use tabs, like if you teach someone that joins the band. I use all... tab now. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Working with Kev and, and Colin and even Patrice, everybody reads music in the band. So mm -hmm. that's a very uh, uh, useful uh, leverage, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we yeah. Don't, we don't see each other often, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like uh, anyway, we need we need to speak about Chewy a bit, you know. So uh yeah. we'll come back to tabs after. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. But so uh, doing it just with his eyes. Yeah, but, but but he tabbed out what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, but not not every song, but but on on some occasion, you know, 
But yeah, still, it's needed to. Yeah. I know yeah. seeing Dam on Grand for the first time, just playing with Cryptopsy, I was like, this might be the best guitar player I've yeah, seen. Yeah, he's and fucking, like, I just I'm I can immediately just see. I was like, who is this guy? Oh, it's the Martyr guy. Oh, like immediately, I was like, this guy is like one of the best musicians yeah, I've he seen. Is, star. Yeah. He's definitely a, a name that should be spoken about way more. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what, guys, when the because because we live together after he moved to Montreal with me we lived together in my loft and we practiced there and we wrote from wisdom there that was the from wisdom uh, okay comics. okay yeah and two 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 things three three things one evening he goes uh, in town at Fofun and he went to see Voivod play I think I believe it was the Phobos uh, tour. And it was uh, Eric Forrest uh, singing. He said, oh, man, I want to see Voivod, blah, 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 blah. And me, fine. Voivod, me, I'm more a killing technology and the outer limit. And uh, kind of, uh, I have my moments, you know. Love the band. Lo no, don't get me wrong. But not as much as him, even back then. So not that it, it surprised me, but uh, but early on in our uh, friendship, you know, he manifests, you know, a dude, they're they're so great and this and that. And even B Big Steve was was big big fan. Provence, first drummer of Gorgots, big fan of uh, of Voivod. Me, I came so late in the game. Not that I came they're, so late, they're, but they're Montreal, but I, right? Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. me as a teenager, listened to a lot of killing technology, and then uh, it it took a long time for me to come back to the anyway. Yeah. So, so there was that that moment with uh, with Dan, you know, going to see uh, Voivod. One evening, uh, we're hanging out, we're just jamming, and he's playing uh, a, a Voivod song just for fun. I said, "Dude, show me a riff for fun," you know. And he showed me uh, he showed me a, a Voivod riff, you know. And dude, it was so much fun to play. <laughs> yeah, and we're tuning C, you know, but uh, and dude, he could fucking nail it. No problem. So, right. So this. So that was like normal Tuesday night. Hey, I'll show you a Voivod riff. No problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But not a tough Voivod riff because hey, I have my uh, my limits. You know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's the 25th. Uh, you know, I told you about the 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 the, the thing for the air guitar that I carved and everything. You're yeah, 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 yeah. On that evening, they were uh, not evening, but weekend. They were paying homage to Piggy, you know, for like uh, some uh, uh, some kind of uh, of Wayne uh, Tabarnak, like they do for hockey player. They're gonna raise a shirt in the arena. How do you call that? Yeah, like a memorial, memorial or a Hall of Fame, like uh, a retiring, retiring the number, or Quebec Medal, whatever. They were honoring yeah, yeah, yeah. his work, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so. Away was there, Snake was there. I don't remember who played. It wasn't Blackie that played bass that night. And they asked Dan to learn. I think they did like a Voivod medley or something. And dude, it was fucking amazing. So I think I could be wrong. You you have to ask him in an interview. But to me, I think it's this evening. Maybe in 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 a way's mind or something, it's like, oh, we know we experienced something tonight, you know, somebody that can fucking nail our shit, you know. But yeah, but, but so just just to 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 uh, to close my thought, you know, on his talent. Uh, to me, that's what I said, you know, on the video uh, that when they were raising fun for the statue, you know, for Piggy and everything. There's nobody else than fucking Dan that can play this. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he understand the, the 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 aesthetic, and he knows he knows if he writes a, a cheesy Voivod riff or a fucking killer one. And so he he understand layers that uh, uh, average metalhead we we don't go there. You, you understand? Right. What I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's my he perception. Speaks, you know? he, he speaks the Voivod language fluently. So, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, 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 he got full circle in the language, so it's like, I can write the story you want now. No problem. Even with words you don't know. You yeah, know? yeah. It, musically, it, it's as, a, as an image, you know? 
Totally. Dude. Dude. Yeah, dude. we 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 had a we had a great time with Dan. He's I forget what episode he was, but um oh, so good. Yeah, he's he's a great dude, very yeah. humble dude. Um, I, ju- I, I just say him. I, I saw him last week. I, w- I was going to this uh, this uh, uh, technician repair shop uh, place uh, close to Patrice's place. You know, dude, I had my old VH140. You know, MPEG fixed. Oh yeah, yep, yep. So I parked there. And then, hey, 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 what's up? You know, and it's Dan opening the door, so we had a quick, uh, quick chat. Nice. So it was awesome. Hey, Luke, can you, Luke, can you do me a favor? Mm-hmm. Um, so for Voivod, I've, I've, I've listened to just random things, and I never really, it never really caught me, but I could tell there was something there. If you were to tell someone like me, like I know you said you got into it kind of later, is it? What would you tell someone to like listen to or? So I, it's, I'd it's, say it's a, listen to the newest one, dude, with Dan on it. It's fucking great, dude. I, it's synchronistic something. It is oh. yeah, it hey, is. Anthony, in, in the latest one, you know, they did the EP, Post Society, Tabarnak, it's good. <clears throat> yeah. It's heavy. It's like Voivod, it, 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 but heavier and darker, you know, and, and production is great. Yeah. Uh, it's I'd... it's down the path. It's like they haven't missed it. They didn't miss a road. They just kept going and it's, synchro it's, it's, anarchy. That's the one that I'm talking about. Sure, anarchy, check that out, bro. Yeah, that yeah, one yeah. is fucking. Oh yeah, this one's very good. But but me uh, in the latest one with Dan, you know, uh, me synchro anarchy fucking hit me uh, that EP. It's good. But me in the oldest one, fun. Strangely enough, it, it's an underdog. Uh, unsung one me it's outer limits okay dude there's um and there's a 17 minute song in there you should Mm. start with this song because it has to me it has the flavor of killing technology and dimension atros but if you start with song one you're gonna go like that's not the right but but then but that's how what got my attention was that 17 minute epic song and dude, yeah. it, it's fucking that's like epic. how rush got me back in the day was yeah. those lengthy which one is it uh joel that has the 20 it's like a 17 or 20 minute is it 21 12 or something 21 12 probably no no it's the other one that we love oh, oh it's uh hemispheres there we go hemispheres uh, that yeah, fucking yeah. Oh. Well, the album you mean like leave i know obvious so, I mean, luke, luke, luke luke you're canadian like what's your favorite rush album how about that that's a qu- fucking question oh to me it's uh yeah, snake and arrows oh wow yeah. so, like, wow one. dude i i enjoy that album too but that oh, is the, actually that production I love left the, field one. I love the atmosphere of the production on that record. Interesting. Dude, everything sounds like a I saw album. them on that tour, dude, and it was a great, great oh, show, yeah. dude. I never get and I, I love uh, moving pictures, uh counterparts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I have 2112, but it, not now. It's dude, my uncle book. will love that you love snakes and arrows. That's oh, so funny, snake and arrow. Uh, I mean, no hesitation, uh, first choice. Wow, I'm gonna go back and listen to that. That's gonna be a listen now. It's it's got great production, it's got good songs, but man, I I did not expect you to say that one just because there's so many greats with Rush, you know. Yeah, Yeah. but that's awesome. That's I love I love the like because usually people like, okay, well, what is my metal credit like lie on? Like, you know, like you say the new one, most people will not say the new Rush album, like that. That's such a, a a fucking curveball to people, you know. What was that's, that? Yeah. That was like two thousand eight. Like it was uh, 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 outer limits. Nobody, yeah, yeah. nobody talks. But me, that, that's that's what it spoke again, to you. Jack Liminus, the seventeen minutes song. You, you, you do me a favor. You go listen to that. Song oh, someone, tonight. someone, type that in here, right? Oh, here. we're definitely going to be listening to all this. Yeah, Jack Liminus. They said that earlier. Yeah, and crank it loud. <laughs> all right. All right. I am. Take, I'm take in. Advice, <laughs> take the advice from the master, dude. So to me, when I so just to finish on with Dan, you know, when I when I see Dan perform, you know, with Voivod, and I hear him on the new record, it's like if he pick up the torch on on that song, you know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the from wisdom to hate touring aspect of it, though, how did that go? It went good. It went good. 
Cause that album, it does. It it seems a little bit shorter than. Uh, I don't know if it just feels like it's shorter to me, but maybe no, it's shorter. Yeah. Hey, have to be death metal, so we got to do a short record. Yeah, right? that's right. That no, it kind of that, that 10, 11 song. Oh, not eight, even. It's like eight eight songs or something. Is it's it really like, uh, forty five ish? But that's actually still lengthy for that amount of songs. That's good. Yeah. That's good. yeah. So yeah. how how so, that so, touring cycle go for that one? It went it went good. Uh, so we did uh, we did a first tour, uh, and uh, Dan came on the road. Blah blah blah. I think uh, yeah, that's the tour we did. Uh, again, uh, we name all the band uh, uh, earlier. Uh, Casey, what what were the band? Were, no, it was it on the Berserker. I think the Berserker. Uh, it was on the from Wisdom tour. I think so. Anyway, so it went Berserker, good. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, and then uh, came back from the tour. Blah blah blah. And then uh, Dan uh, and I uh, we parted ways. He he went back to work on Martyr and everything. And uh, we had another tour with the Aside, and we did this tour as a three piece. And okay. uh, and that was it. That that was it after. You know, uh, that's when, you know, when we came back from that tour, you know, me, I was taking a lot of dope and everything. So I decided to leave Montreal and I wasn't studying anymore, neither. I, I had left a conservatory. So I said to, to work in a fucking shop in Montreal and I'm fucking, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't hate, I just hate my life, you know, and uh, I had yeah. to take some air and uh, get out. Yeah. And so so I left and so that's when the the band uh, finished after that. Yeah. Yeah. But and I just I mean I, I never thought that I would make more and more albums after that, you know, as I said. Really? So at that time you were like And you... I and I was what's that? I'm saying at that time you really were like okay, it's done. Yeah. And I was really happy with what was accomplished, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. No uh uh no unfinished business like oh wish we never made that record or so I was artistically, I was really happy and proud of uh, what we did. Each wow. record is very different, you know, and, mm, yeah. and um, I got my fix. I got my fucking fix. There was no wow. disappointment. There was only there was left on a high note and just walk off in the distance. Probably. Right. Is that what you're thinking? I'm sorry. Oh, like you, you, you left on a high thing. Like you left on a, a really good album and just walked away. Like yeah, right, maybe, but my heart wasn't into that, and I had to take care of my uh, of my life. You know, dude, mm. I, I was tripping so much. I mean, it was uh, very unhealthy. You know, a lot of yeah. chemicals and uh, fucking uh, no more weed and uh, you know. Mm. What chem less. I'm sorry if you don't mind me asking, what chemicals? Oh, I was doing a lot of blow, you know, for but oh, for two years or something, and it got me a lot of trouble, you know. I'm a very excessive person. When did that guess, start? I'm sorry. When did that start? Oh, that was uh, that was a bit before Dan came in the band, you know. But so that was, was a post obscura. Yeah, so to speak, you know. But I was really private about it. But at some point, it kind of get out of hand and uh, right and. And uh, it wasn't mm. unhealthy, you know. But I, when you're but touring I, and stuff, it's when you're touring, hitting the road. It's kind of hard to like to be away from it. It's it's always actually, around. you know what? I was healthier on the road because I wasn't really? in, into my home patterns and stuff. Oh, you was oh, a home okay. pattern. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So uh, and you know, uh, so I couldn't focus at the at, at at the conservatory anymore. So I left school, got really depressed, you know, and uh, I was really. Uh, outside my shoes you know so i said you know what and then i met my my girlfriend so mm -hmm. uh, i told the boys you know uh, i told mcdonald and cloutier uh, i'm uh, i'm leaving i, yeah. I gotta take care of uh, no because otherwise it's unproductive and they forget it yeah right. and yeah. uh so i came came here you know closer to my family and i start over again and you know that that's what you got to do you got to change your environment you know when you're deep right. into those, uh, yeah yeah the, uh uh, behaviors and stuff you know that's a very and, uh, educated way of doing it though oh, a, lot totally, of people don't change, so, a lot of people don't change yeah. their environment and they like they keep yeah. it going to understand sure. that oh, it's no, very no, 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 no. good very i was good. really unhappy you know and uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. uh yeah so i just left and then you know and then 
we got that phone call. I got the phone call, you know, McDonald committed suicide. Yeah. And then yeah. me to me, it was like the nail and the I'm done. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Not going we, down this we, path. We, yeah. we went to a service, you know, Cloutier. even Big Steve had left the band. We did wisdom with, with Dan and we haven't spoke and we, we weren't on the, on the, on the, on the bad, uh, how do you say that on the bad? Bad terms. Oh, yeah, but he just did his thing, and it's mm -hmm, a very, mm -hmm. very strange time with friendship and everything, you know. Yeah, very so, sad. Do huh? you, you decided to clean up off the chemicals pre or post this uh, Steve's passing? Oh, pre, pre. Uh, okay. I was already yeah. uh, okay. I had I... already moved, you know, so I was doing good, you know. Okay, so, so you're already. Yeah, yeah. Like, again, the, I talk about okay. that. I wasn't, like, junkie for 10 years or whatever. It's just, right. like, a bad curve, you know, and then, okay, you got to change. Re right? gotta yeah, reset, yeah. Reset, reset the... There's no way. Yeah. Dude, dude, dude. And then, uh, I mean, uh, when, 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 you, when, I mean, uh, when you show up to rehearsal and your fucking gears at the pawn shop so you get high, I mean, forget it. Jesus, I lost yeah, my viola yeah. at the pawn shop and all that. It's, it's just... Dude. No shit. So Crazy. It's, it's like... Uh, Dude, I'm no. so glad that I made mean, one. I did, I had no idea about that, and two. No, no, I'm no, so no. But I, but I don't. It's not something I'm proud of, and I don't. Oh well, no, no, no. I, it's that, okay. That, I can talk about it. It's okay. No, and yeah, I. Thank I, you for I, talking about that. One, thank you for opening up about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah, yeah. I I do love hearing that because, um, I hold you in such high regard, and and knowing that you overcame that there's there's actually a lot of things in your timeline that you've overcame to become the person that you are talking to us today you're Thanks. such a nice dude Thank you're you. so humble and yeah. and to know like how many hurdles you've had to jump oh, over but, but that that that's part of uh, what we became as an older person too you know it's it's something right. you understand yeah. and uh, Lesson, lessons learned yeah yep. For sure. it's, it's an experience, you know. Now I'm not ashamed uh, of the. I mean, I don't talk to it in every interview or whatever, but the, it's it's okay, you know. Uh, there was there was a lot of dope in the band at some point, you know, a lot of dope. Even McDonald, it was no fun road, huh? And he ended up uh, fucking uh, hanging himself, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, ooh. crazy. I know. That's so, how that uh, shit. The, the, the the party's been over for a while, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so uh, it's all good it's too know. much i mean i always i always talked about like i mean I'm, I'm having drinks right now but i've always noticed that like when you're having drinks or partying you're borrowing you know happiness from tomorrow so how much how much how much happiness are you willing to borrow yeah. to be like okay is, is it worth the party now to cheers feel like depression and like you know all the things tomorrow like can you i mean can you handle that tomorrow or not you know yeah what is it's okay you know where we're chatting you guys have a beer it's all oh, yeah 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 uh, i know i know it's I know, not I'm like gonna... we're, we're yeah. fucking italic uh, coma and fucking puking ourselves out and, it's uh, like yeah, yeah i know i know i know i mean it's there's, it's, it's, there's it's, different it's, levels well there's like innocent ways to have fun and the innocent no, 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 is no. most is like a little bit of like dessert you know no 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 then it's like oh i'll have a drink or two you know it's like there's like levels and then it just gets to like of course but it can get off it can get off before you know it oh absolutely it can get before you know it you're like oh i'm you know you have like well, i have a couple yeah. drinks a week until like yeah. oh i have like nine drinks a day oh like oh i'm oh, yeah. going that's, out and doing that's just like human behavior day. though if i would have stayed in montreal and, and kept going those uh and kept uh going on those uh, very bad behavior uh you know i don't think we uh we would have made those records uh, we probably wouldn't be talking right now yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't think I would have gone the, the, down that road, but you know, so yeah. unhappy and everything. So that's why it was a very good yeah. move. Then, that's when all the woodworking started and everything. So oh, it was, yeah, it was awesome. so much fun. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have so, great outlets. I mean, I know that. Like for, it's funny because I, I, you know, hang out with people that aren't into metal, and they're like, "Oh, the metal people are so nice and mellow." It's like because we have a, we have an outlet to get our. <laughs> Or all of our like mad, like it's, we have right. all of our anger. We have a place to like get it out. And everyone's like, "Oh, you're nice here." Like That's I thought, it was gonna be, like everyone's gonna be like, "Oh," when you're walking on the show. Like everyone's like, "Hello, how are yeah. you? Hey, how's it going?" Because everyone's yeah. like got their outlet, you know. And, yeah. and you rehearsal have room is a nice place to get it out. You know, don't exactly. need to go to a fucking UFC. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> fine if you like your UFC, you know. But you don't yeah. need to uh, anyway. 
no, no but if you really do it right you're getting a cardio workout in the rehearsal studio too so you got your physical and mental it's not yeah. just it's not just, physical, it's not just like working out it's like also like yeah that like artistic outlet though like mm-hmm. yeah i'm sorry yeah it's, it's also the the artistic outlet yeah, yeah you know like creative. almost like if you were yeah like if you were like making a horror movie or something it doesn't have to be like you're like sweating or something but like you're you know you're like you're, you're like putting it out there yeah you're yeah. like you're putting something out there that like is, is like is being put together and built and then people are even if one or two people think it's interesting that's worth it you know it's yeah like, exactly all that matters you know or even if you think it's interesting who cares you know you gotta, <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta just uh it's just fun to create art you know and yeah. there's an outlet to that and then like there's the physical element too of course playing it and and, and, and you know performing it yeah and that's like an adrenaline and that's a whole different you know yeah and then yeah. there's bands that like you know that being tight as a band is a whole nother thing you know yeah cool. yeah yeah but that that's such uh you know uh, when, when when i was in school and i experienced the thing that you, you create music but somebody else plays it for you oh wow that's something yeah. different than when you have yeah. to perform it yourself and then you're in your chair and you're like no not like this not like <laughs> yeah you're like dude yeah. you start waving a wander if not more than when you're on stage and you do the thing you, you know how to do it, you know, but it's a big responsibility too when you have to perform. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, okay, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to play yeah, well live. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, before yeah, we well, get, oh, that's true. Before we get too far away from the chemicals and drugs conversation, I have one more question for you. What kind of psychedelics have you used, Luke? Have you, oh man, dove into psychedelics at all? Dude, dude, the short story, uh, in, in, you know, in the comic uh, book I told you guys uh, that uh, got out, th- there's a funny story in there about uh, one day that we were all four uh, um, 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 bust out on on chemicals. <laughs> we, you know, smoke uh, smoke some weed, blah blah blah. Okay, we're getting uh, we're getting ready to jam, and then one of our friends stopped by the rehearsing place during summer. You know, very hot and everything, and he had some uh, some uh, LSD. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, on paper, how do you call that? It's LSD. You know? yeah, it's like a, a tab. A tab. I'm sorry. A tab. Yeah, a tab. So, yeah, yeah. Acid, so yeah. we had that. And uh, and back then I had some fucking uh, crazy neighbors, you know, uh, mental health and uh, you know very very sketchy. Uh, mm-hmm. anyway. So so the guy living the house next door, he was always dressed, you know, as a in army, and he had like this Rambo knife, and he was screaming at us outside. We don't want yeah yeah here anymore and blah blah blah. <laughs> and us that day, you know, just got a tab in, you know, not kicked in yet, but uh, you know, it, it's in there. Definitely. So we go back inside and we decide that uh, that we jam. So we start to jam and dude, at some point, <laughs> man, 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 I'm, I'm laughing just... so hard. It's not... Yeah, yeah. Good laugh. It's... And, and I'm looking at McDonald's. You know, he's in, in no shirt and he's like doubling. You know, like this. <laughs> you know, like yeah. and, and me, I remember looking at the carpet. I'm just laughing my <laughs> yeah so fucking so hard you know? yeah because some people can use the acid for being like inspirational but some people like some yeah, people just, just want to have the, have the fun and just laugh have a good time like and, yeah. and experience experience friendship and stuff you know what i mean like not let's oh. you know let's not make music right now <laughs> so at some point me i said fuck it i can't play man but i'm back forget it so yeah, i yeah. take my guitar put it there so i went out in the kitchen because we were jamming in that closed room you know so yeah, i walked yeah. in the kitchen and and you know the kitchen was like you had the kitchen it was like a big room and you had my bedroom but the bedroom was uh separated there was no wall it was a gorgot swag there that like mm-hmm. divided the, the room in in two okay so yeah. i look at, at at the at the backdrop the the banner and it's on fire yeah oh, oh shit. Shit. and i'm like what the fuck? so i <laughs> I said, guys, fire! And now <laughs> they're fucking laughing. So I tear it off. I walk outside, and I see my my neighbor's wife. She's on my fucking porch, and she's like, "What the fuck, guys?" And so she entered in the room while we were jamming, and she set the fucking place on fire. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's so terrible. <laughs> and we're like, "What the fuck?" And dude, you can see that in the book. It's very funny, dude. You see our thumb. 
with the tab on it and yeah. you know? <laughs> fun fun and this is a fire at the end <laughs> it's like I, uh, my question would be like if you guys didn't take acid that night would that lady have set shit on fire like yeah, it's... wait check it out <laughs> then we stop the the jam and then she she goes to her room and me i'm kind of laughing and having no more fun neither it's like ooh, it kind of kind of brings you back you know but but dude you look at yourself in the mirror and you oh yeah you. yeah <laughs> The mirror, the mirror move is always like a, that's like bad a move. level it's yourself. Bad I mean, move. for me nowadays, like, I mean, every now and then I'll like once a year, I'll take like a psychedelics and stuff and just, just, I know what the mirror brings. So I just stare at it and let it have fun. Like, let yeah. it, just let it do so my thing. <laughs> then, then, then the, one of the guys said, dude, I mean, we got to call the cops on this. I said, dude, you feel like seeing the cops right now? Are you ready to <laughs> do like, a it, report? It peak, you know, it kicked in and everything. <laughs> and then, so we wait a few minutes, and then uh, Cloutier said, "Dude, I mean, we can't let that go. We really got to call the cops." I'm like, yeah. okay. So I take the phone, <laughs> call the cops. I said, uh, and then you got this cop uh, answering. Is like, yeah, hello, whatever. I'm like, uh, sir, we were jamming, and the flags on fire. That, I said, just something like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the guys start laughing in the back. You guys probably like, oh, dude, you guys are shredding, dude. <laughs> and then he's like, what? I said, okay, sir. I said, I'm sorry. We had a few beers, you know, so I'll try to explain myself. Blah, blah, blah. He said, okay. So I explained him uh, the best I could. So he said, okay, I'm going to send someone. Dude, three fucking uh, 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 cop car uh, got to my place. So there were six policemen in the apartment. <laughs> And dude, and then and then we explain the, the 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 story. Then they look at the banner, and there's no way we could tell that fire had caught on that thing. So Jesus. then I'm like, is it me that fucking with hallucination or what the fuck? You know. <laughs> so we look like fucking stupid, you know, with six uh... cops. And you have a nosy one that kind of looks for trouble while you're talking to the other guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man! So I ended Jesus. up doing uh, uh, how do you call that deposition? You know, you you tell your story and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a we call it you know? like doing a report or an interview. Exactly yeah. a report. That's it. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the right word. <laughs> so I do a report, uh, you know, and they so they went to knock at her place. Nobody answered. And now, dude, we when the cops left, we were like, dude, very bad tripping. It's like, dude, I'm not sleeping here. And so we all left with our instrument and slept someplace else. We're afraid the place would go down on fire, you know. Oh my God. So the next day, I go work at my mom's restaurant. I come back. So when I come back early afternoon, Cruci is already there waiting for me. And he, then he goes like, dude, have you, have you you heard about that? I said what about the neighbor? What do you mean the neighbor? Dude, the, the, the fireman, the police, and the ambulance were here this morning, and they fucking arrested the neighbor. So what the fuck? Yes, yeah, because someone from the hospital came by to make sure she was taking medicine right for mental health, and she uh, she uh, she threatened the, the 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 hospital person, you know, that if she wouldn't leave her port, she would burn the house. <laughs> so she was fucking pyromaniac. I didn't dream about it. You know? Yeah. So, uh, dude, you got your fucking. You got proof that it wasn't just fucking... So that was a chemical experience. Uh, I think it's my last chemical experience. Is that really? Yeah, that's, uh, okay. That sounds like a like a, a heavy one. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll set just, you straight. Just to finish on that, the newspaper came back, uh, came came by with photographer and journalist, you know? Oh, and, and it and you, guys, the cat, you guys are tripping the this whole time. In the, in, the, in the newspaper the next day. So we got the article and pinned it on the wall in the rehearsing room. <laughs> and dude, she had kind of weirdly shaved her head just with clipper strokes, like jackassy or something. Yeah. And she was trapped like fucking Annibal Lecter on the fucking, uh, how do you say that? The bed with rollers that goes into an ambulance or something? Oh, uh, uh, Gurney. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no more tabs for me. It's all good. <laughs> Only guitar tabs. No, no. And it, yeah, yeah. It's all about guitar tabs now. But dude, it had to happen that day that we're fucking. Wait, dude, we do that like uh, once every two years. But yeah, that yeah. afternoon, fucking fire, policemen. I mean, oh the whole Jesus, that sounds like a nightmare. That sounds like the worst thing you want in that. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's God. so good. That's a story dude. right there. That is a story. Thank you, drugs. <laughs> yes, dude. Most definitely.
All right, oh, so man. we're we're closing in on three hours, but we do want to get the we don't want to cap this jams. story off. So let's keep going with this real quick. Um, so after from wisdom to hate, what was Coded your sands. you know mind? Oh, where were you at in your mind? You were like, okay, this is this is it. I'm done. Yeah, like I said, you know, I, I said to myself, I'm done. You know, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> I just uh, just put the put the guitar under the bed and I'm uh, I'm just done, and uh, then started the woodworking and woodworking was picking up well and I was uh, having a lot of uh, a lot of fun doing this you know, and learning a lot of new things. Then, a couple of years after, Big Steve uh, reached me, and he goes like, "Dude, uh, I'm starting Negativa and I would like if you come play guitar with us." I said, yeah. dude, I haven't played in fucking four years. I'm like, yeah, forget it. No, 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 no. Come on. You know, we're gonna we're gonna jam together again. It's gonna be fun. This and that. I'm like, oh dude, I don't know, you know. And he not twist my arm, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, I was kind of missing, you know, uh making music with him. You know, we had a very good uh, 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 uh complicity. Yeah. So, uh, so I started uh, every week, you know, I would hitchhike to Montreal and fucking pre- cause I wasn't still driving yet. Dude, I hitchhiked 20 years before having my license. No shit. Yeah. 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 And I live two hours from Montreal. How, okay. Now, now you're going to make me ask you more questions right now, dude. Like mm-hmm. you hitchhiked for 20 years. <laughs> Who tell me about some people that you came across? Did you did you hold relationships with any of them? Was there any psychos that you're like, holy shit, I shouldn't be in this car right now? All that stuff, dude. Now I need to know. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, man, I mean, I met some 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 some, uh, Bible freaks. Some uh, you you name it. I mean. some that they, they 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 give you a ride because they think you know they they they, uh, they they you're a prostitute or something or uh, and and I met very uh, very nice people too you know for for instance when I was hitchhiking uh, pretty much uh, every day of the week you know weekdays to go work at my mom's restaurant there and on the way back there was always that salesman that would stop at the restaurant so I would cook him like. Uh, Two cheeseburgers and he would give me a ride back home so i can be on time at two o'clock for rehearsal you know so i met very wow. helpful and nice people you know sure. when i started the band check it out when i even started the band i was like 18. i was a chiking wow. going back home on sunday night around 11 or midnight from sherbrooke to 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 my place which is about 30 minutes driving mm-hmm. And uh, one evening I was stuck at the corner there and there's this man that stopped. He goes like, where are you going? I said, I go to Danville. He said, I live in Richmond. I can take you to Danville, which is like 10 minutes apart or something. And uh, we became good buddies. And he was like the, 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 the security guy for the bus station in Sherbrooke. So he said, dude, are you coming to town every week? I said, yes. He said, just come see me when you're done rehearsal. and I'm going to take you home on, on, on Sundays. So I had very good, like angels or very nice uh, people, you know, helping me on those uh, hitchhike right. years. But right. of course, I met some fucking uh, psychos and uh, anybody weirdos. that like you were like, "Holy shit, dude! I don't know why I'm in the car with this person." Dude, dude, there was there was this guy. He stopped to give me a ride, but he said, "Oh, the door doesn't open. You gotta come by. I'm gonna walk out of the car. You gotta come by." From the driver's seat to sit on the passenger seat okay you get in the car the car is all stripped out the steering wheel is all it's on steel it's stripped out you understand when it yeah yeah see wires everywhere it's like what the fuck? and he's drunk out of his mind so i get in the car <laughs> we cross a bridge and first thing we know we get in the fucking ditch and i said hey fuck you man so I, <laughs> and in the winter you know it's like oh tab, I'm you know, you know, dude. And, and a, a convicted guy that just went out of prison, you know, got oh, in the highway fine. once, you know, and uh, got in the ditch also with this guy. Oh, anyway. Man. So, you know what? You know, I told you about the comic book. You know what? You know what's the first picture, the first drawing that you see on the comic book? Huh? You see me hitchhiking. That's how it starts. Wow. No <laughs> shit. The day that I got Damn. this Gar on tape, I went. 
to visit friends hitchhiking that day, you know. So it's uh wow. but the hitchhiking thing did a lot of mileage. Yeah, dude. It really years. sounds like I mean 20 years. That's how you get around. That's crazy, bro. That is so Jesus. crazy. No, I love it though. It it makes total sense. It's that's a Luke LeMay move. Right <laughs> yeah, so then I started jamming with Big Steve. Then we did mm -hmm. the Negativa EP. Which I bought as soon as it came out. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so so you heard all these songs. Oh, yeah. We so, were waiting for that. That was an anticipation album yeah, yeah. for me. It was so like, you, Luke came out of the thing, and now he's in Negativa, dude. What? It's funny, because you say come comes out of the woodwork, but he's a woodworker. Yeah, 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 right. Thing, I yeah, yeah. Get, a, get, a, get out of the, the fucking uh, wood chip pile, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so jamming with Big Steve, and every Friday when we're done with rehearsal, we go for a little snack in town and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then Big Steve said, dude, I really got to talk to you about something. I said, what the fuck? Something wrong? No, 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 no. But I got to talk to you about something. I said, fuck, man. <laughs> he was pulling my leg, you know. <laughs> and he says, uh, you know what happened in two years? No. He said, it's going to be uh, Gorkot's uh, 20th anniversary. Okay. Mm, so? <laughs> he said, you should make another record. Ah, come on, man. No, I'm not going to make another record. Huh? Tabernacle. Tab, I'm not. You think I'm going to make it? <laughs> no record. Let's drop some tabs. No, no. And uh, So I said, no, man. I said, come on. Uh, I said, my plate is full with the with the workshop. And, uh, you know, it's nice. We get together. You know, we, we, we do we do this. And, it, and it's your band. I didn't want to be in the driver's seat at all. I said, mm. I'm going to enjoy myself. But uh, I'm not the one in charge here. Which I really like, you know. It was it, 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 it was perfect. Yeah, nice, uh, nice way of uh, of doing things. I said, no, 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 man, you're really gonna and then, okay. And he really insisted. I said, dude, okay, let me think about it. So a week or two passed. I said, you know what, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do another record. Cool, but. Don't be don't be disappointed, but because he, he wanted to do the, the Gorgoth record with me also. But I said, dude, we already do the negativa. So I said, don't 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 be offense offended, but uh, uh, I, I think uh, I'd like to do it with new people, you know, a new experience, new I mean, mm -hmm. not that we went full circle, you and I, but I, again, we're doing negativa. Not that Negativa was lacking experimentation. There's mm -hmm. plenty. It's, it's right, great. right. Okay? Totally. I get my experimental fix there. Even more than in Gorgas because Big Steve really liked improvisation. But me, it was never my my comfort zone there. and I never enjoy improvisation. Okay? Yeah. And him, he wanted to have improvisation like... Uh, 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 sections in, in, in composition, very specific place, you know, but me, anyway, it, it was not my comfort place. So that's why I, I think I'm going to make another record. And, uh, and the first, first person I had in mind was, uh, I want to jam with Colin because I met Colin, he, Colin, uh, I came to Montreal when we did the Negativa, uh, release, uh, evening, you know, we, and we played the, the whole EP, we did a show. And the next day, Martyr were playing in town. So, and, and Colin's big fan of Martyr, you know. So the next yeah, day, yeah. he went to see Martyr in Montreal. So that that evening, I met Colin. So I I kept a very good uh, 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 I had a good uh, had a good time with him, and I had a very uh, uh, a lot of esteem for uh, for his work, you know, and uh, him as an artist and. Uh, and I said, oh, I would really like to have him, you know, to play bass in the band. And uh, Longstreth had already wrote to me a couple emails, but when I was more focused okay. in the shop and I said, no, I'm not jamming anymore. But in the meantime, I ended up listening to Knives of Ice from Dimmock. You, you guys know this record? Oh, Dimmock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, what's the, the, what's the, 
Yeah, what's the guitar player that used to we we, we Sean? Tour with the Eternal? Sean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the Ripping Corpse guy. He, Ripping Corpse. He, he had right. a band That's with right. Rutan back in the early nineties, you know, yep. in Jersey. Exactly. And I, I I was I was always big fan of that sound, that Jersey sound, you know. So totally. So hearing Knights of Ice, and dude, I was blown away by Longstreet performance on that record. And then uh -huh. I said, oh, I think I'm going to write to this guy. And he's in the New York area. It's not too okay. far from Montreal. And then uh, I sent an email to John, and he said, fine. Call in, fine. But I needed a guitar player. So when I told to Big Steve, you know, I want to play with different people, blah, blah, blah. He said, wait, when we, uh, when we come back home after the snack, there's a guitar player I want to show you on, the, on YouTube. You, you, you got to see this guy. I mean, he's your man. Okay. So, dude, we get to his place and he showed me a fucking dysrhythmia show. Dude. Yep. So I, was, I was in the same couch when I saw Suffocation Jamming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Luke, so, but I was so in, in awe. It was like, that, I used to go that, see them play. That, what the fuck? And, dude, I remember the exact song. It was Bypass the Solenoid. So, if you guys want to check mm -hmm. it out, they're pretty young, you know, but it's very well filmed and it sounds really good. You know, the perform uh, Kev plays like a strat. It's very clingy, clinky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Colin, uh, you know, yeah. he's beating the yeah. shit. Yeah. So yeah. I always cite one show, Luke, that that was very uh, um, touching experience for me, which was Dysrhythmia and Behold the Octopus at a place <laughs> called Elbow Room. Which is closed, and by the way, RIP. Now closed, and it was a $6 cover charge, and they had dollar paps beers at the... It's like a fucking bar. basement show, or uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, I always say that I, I got I spent $16, and I got fucked up and got, got to and see you saw it's, it's and the whole arc of us the same night, dude. Yeah. Went yeah. home with a, a shirt from each of the bands, I supported at the merch table, you know, and and had a great time. Uh, Warbreaker, aka D David, he was there. Casey, I don't know if you were there that night, but I know Josh was there. We we had a great time that night, and and to see Colin in his element with Behold the Octopus, where he's playing the war guitar. Yeah, that thing is insane to watch. Anybody who knows how to play it, play it. Yeah. At what's first, the difference? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was gonna say, what's the difference, difference between a Chapman stick and a war guitar? You already, we've already had this discussion. I know, but I won't. I don't. I, I don't it's so it different. So no, different. Colin would be your man. It's not different yeah, at all. I, I couldn't. Uh, pick Gotta get Colin on the podcast. Uh, uh, okay. Chat, chat. I'm gonna, a, a I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna do it one more time. Sorry. Just told me the that. the Chapman stick literally looks like a. Uh, uh, it's Dude, a how, how many strings have you played? The I don't care. Play, I can tell Anthony you. Is explaining the string instrument. Anthony can play "Wish You Were Here" by Pink Floyd. A challenge that thing is a fretboard <laughs> that good. was like okay. one solid thing. It, uh -huh. It's only like that small. Where it's but there's like no unique. body, so to speak, like like a war to a Chapman. There is nothing. A yeah. war guitar the body. is straight up. body. No, I mean, but a Chapman's <laughs> also fretless. Like a a Chapman's also the fretless. Stick, it's, it's a war guitar is no, no, it's not fretless. It's, a Chapman it's a is definitely fret fretless on its own. <laughs> Chapman's fretless? Yeah, no, no, uh, I don't know. No. Yeah. You gotta okay, Joel. Look at a picture. <laughs> Just Google it for me right now, please. We've already okay, had this nice. discussion. I know for Chapman a fact stick. they are so massively different. Stick versus war guitar. Yes, Chapman stick. Look right. at a picture and then look at a war guitar. It is. Like a no, war guitar, no, is no, to... Luke's right. Luke's right. It's just the body. That's all it is. It's the body. It's the lack of the body. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but... I, I, I don't know if the string pattern is the same or uh, this. I that's know. the main thing, because because Luke, you know that like a lot of those guitars, will, they'll be the lower strings, the lower note strings are in the middle, and in they the go middle. out and higher. And it's a mirror. It's a book match image. Yeah. So to speak, it's kind of like for a piano player to play. Yeah. 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 Um. There's, I don't know, it's showing like 20 different guitars. Uh, I thought a Chapman uh, and uh, like a war guitar fretboard is basically like those wide ass fucking. Looks like Max Nose, Max Nose. Low strings. Are, okay. So, okay. Chapman's only, 
Only frets, yo. Okay. Only yo. <laughs> only frets, yo. <laughs> only frets, yo. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, I haven't. I think it's just a. I literally think it's a brand of a of a Chapman stick. Is war guitar. I need to see pictures, dude. <laughs> he Anthony's I'll so never like locked I'll in. Never. He's like, no, yeah, I'm so a war guitar in. is different than a Chapman stick. Yeah. <laughs> Colin, Colin yeah. will make a whole forum. Oh, Colin would know everything. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Colin yeah. would be the the guy the guy that we're talking about is the master to talk to. Yeah. But that that all right. So yeah, he's so, yeah, he's so, amazing. So these were the the, the 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 partner in crimes that I wanted, you know, for the. So I I told the I I told the the the, the guys I said, oh so I I I, um, I wrote them. I sent an email to to each of them on uh, MySpace, and uh, and they, they 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 each wrote back and they said, "Yeah, fine, uh, we uh, we want to do it." So great. So I said, "Let me let me write three songs first, then we'll get together, and uh, we see uh, where it goes." You know, we see. Uh, I mean, it doesn't mean because it sounds right that we'll get along right or the other way around or you know we'll see how it goes yeah so uh so i wrote three songs i wrote uh, uh ocean of wisdom uh enemies of compassion and uh well the uh, another one uh, ember's voice so uh first weekend <clears throat> first thing first i went to jam with uh with longstreth one-on-one and we nailed the uh, fucking uh Two songs, uh, almost two songs in a weekend. Two, two songs, almost three. We did a lot of work, dude. You have a. I, 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 I filmed the first jam. You see a video of our very, very, very first uh, weekend of jam uh, uh, rehearsal that we got together, and it clicked really well. We got along great. Uh, nice. Yeah. So we got all the drums on these guys, and then in the meantime. I, I I did uh, all the tablature. I can't say tabs anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a Be I careful. Yeah. <laughs> Healthier. No fire in the music. Sheet, you know? <laughs> so uh, so I did the. I, I wrote everything down. Send that to Colin. Send that to to Kev. And I yeah. said, here's what I play, and dress it up. With, with 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 your style you know with what you think and do nice what you hear on colored sand that we barely change anything yeah you just let them do their own thing yeah that's cool yeah anthony's and still he, looking up look, look is him looking up he's still trying to find a difference between a chapman <laughs> stick and a war guitar oh uh, i know yeah anthony's he's still looking on the, up on the chapman guy <laughs> and he knows that i'm sending him differences right now and he just doesn't want to admit oh, geez. it oh geez well <laughs> Anyways, um, but you were saying, Luke, like about like how you like hearing other people's influences, like on or like when you send them music and they send you back their parts and you hear it. Dude, you, you right? want that surprise element? There you go. It, it's and and dude, and yeah, I, nice. every time it, it never happened that like uh, I get a song and I'm like, not sure for that part. Never, mm -hmm. never. Right. Never. Yeah. Yeah. They have. They have a good. good uh, I like their 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 uh, their composition uh, 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 judgment because you know what that, that that's interesting. In school, there's a, one of the teacher I had in composition. He said, "You know what composition is? Composition is solving problems. Mm. What is the note that you're gonna put after the other one? If you put it to the simplest, mm. so it's about uh, fixing problem. Composition okay. is fixing problem." Wow, but maybe it's it's it doesn't sound too much fun. You don't feel like starting a band, you know? Right, right. Yeah. I just but that's what it is at, at some point, you know. So, well, technically, to, to, to go back to 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 Colin uh, and Kevin because they play string instrument like me, they dress up harmonically and everything. They have such a great uh, uh, um, sense of taking decision composition wise. So yeah. the way they fix problem compositionally, it's on the money. It's very yeah. confident for my mm. for my uh, for my taste. You know, they know more equations in the mathematical aspect of yeah fixing the, the have, problem. 
Yeah. Because they, they, they take, yeah, the, it's, mm -hmm. compositionally, they take the right decision. Oh, I'm going to dress this. I'm going to, I'm going to play this on this part. And there's always an intention. It's just like, well, I don't know. We'll see, whatever. No, 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 no. Everything's there for, you know, a little, uh, so dude, and I get my fix because I'm, I'm pretty geeky when we get them though. Dude, right, dude, right. dude, 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 when we, when we did the Pleiades, you know, the, the 30, 30 minute song, mm -hmm. it was so fun, you know, when, when everything was done. So, okay, we do a run through and every time it was like, Oh, what's up? Uh, minor detail. So, so it was like, dude, we should have a shirt made like a minor detail. Are we going to do like this thing here because of that? And it's it's like micro detail all the time, you know? So it was like, a, it became like a joke, you know, at some point. But 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 we stopped for a reason to fix those little things, you know? That's that's what made what the music is, you know? So <laughs> Totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got some, uh, I, actually, one thing I want to get to, I, I told everyone in the chat, I was like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna save the questions for later. Yeah. By um, the way, we've had quite a bit of uh, chat activity tonight, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some questions. I mean, Luke, you you bring people out of the woodwork. Yeah, dude. Not, oh, not, yeah? Uh, not yeah, yeah. yeah. Out, <laughs> you know, it's not uh, wood shed for fucking uh, scale practice. Fuck that. <laughs> Get the table saw moving, buddy. Fuck the scale. <laughs> did you ever practice? Like, did you ever sit down, Luke? And I mean, now I'm a guitar player talking to you. Um. Just sit and work on scales. Did you ever just? No, no, never. No, but I, but I, but I love practicing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. How do you practice? I think the most important thing about uh, guitar playing and and is how you practice. Like most people will will be like, oh, I'm just gonna mess around for a no. second, or or like some people will be like, oh, I'm doing thirty minutes of scales, thirty minutes of songwriting, thirty minutes of whatever. I'm oh, like. But, I, I, but to me, it, it depends what you want to accomplish. You know, me, I'm not a good lead player. So I kind of, I kind of, you know, that that's Kev's uh, department, you know. Okay. But, okay. but, but lately I've been relearning songs from Consider Dead and I play uh, most of the lead on Consider Dead. Dude, uh -huh. I haven't played these songs in 30 years. And wow. Have so much fun. Yeah. So, awesome. Relearning this, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but to answer your question. That's something I learned from uh, from classical music rehearsal experience. You know, mm -hmm. let's say you you practice because I sang a lot in choirs when I left school. I kept I, I kept doing classical music in Montreal, but I was singing tenor in the choir. I was very good friend with the conductor, you know, and I was a, like a roadie for the orchestra. I would place all the stands for rehearsal and all that stuff. So it was my job, you know. But, yeah, exactly. So, so, but my point is, is that. From my experience in, in the classical music, when you get together for rehearsal, you don't practice what you know. You practice what you don't know. Okay. So, 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 so you fix the problems. You so all the parts that we know, we can play that, you know, inside out, no problem. Let's let's just focus on this and that and this and that and then we can do a run through maybe at the end of rehearsal well, or i think that make that's the difference between you and like people that will yeah. stay i mean no offense to, i mean also myself a lot will stay at the same level because they'll they'll practice what they're comfortable with and be like oh this makes me feel but, good and it's a fun time but they're not like pushing themselves to be but, like yeah but, but don't don't get me wrong on me it's not like oh gotta gotta but lately my, mm. my, my focus to push myself you know I want to get better, dude. I want to be able to to play erosion shit again. But mm, there's yeah. no way tomorrow morning I wake up, even with the best night of sleep. There's no way I can do that. I don't really? have the toolbox anymore for this. No so, shit. so I'm I'm gonna sit down. So it, when when I when we decided to play uh, like the show in Philly and learn old shit, yeah. So uh, consider Dev a lot of uh, tremolo picking. It's old school uh, death metal, you know. Like yeah, uh, disincarnated, you know, all the skank beats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, dude, yeah. for easily three weeks, let's say two hours in the morning, I would just practice the, 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 the you know, I just, just, I just like a, to a beat. out the picking hand, you know, and I even changed the, my grip. And I, I said, you know, if I was gonna, gonna start again to play this these type of uh, ingredient in the music so to speak i'm going to do it right because uh yeah there was a lot of flaws and uh you know uh anyway because because writing music like colored sands or obscura you uh 
I didn't practice those things anymore, you know. So, so at the end of the day, man, it's uh, there's no way uh, I I didn't have what it takes to 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 play the the uh, the older material anymore. But it's been uh, over a, a good month and a half now. And dude, it's so much fun to play, and I'm getting back on my uh, yes, my my old skates, and again, you know, so it's fun. But but I like practicing. Yeah. I like practicing. It's like once it catches on, you start like jamming yeah. again. And yeah, you, I don't you... get bored of, think... of practicing something boring for an hour. I'm yeah, yeah, exactly. Be on that, you know. Me too. Me too. I yeah, think... yeah that's what it, that's, dude. And I got that from uh, let's say when I started playing violin and viola, you know the first. Uh, for half an hour when you start you hold the instrument and you you just want to get the shoulder right so you're gonna yep. you're just gonna change strings with the bow yep just to get that at the right place so i learned how to practice when when i when when, when i learned the uh, for the bit of viola that i played and everything so coming back to the guitar after those years of break and everything so i i i I'm taking the approach that I learned from uh, uh, playing uh, violin and viola. So that leads me actually okay. to one of the one of the questions uh, from uh, Max, one of our great friends, Max from Anomalous. He uh, shout out. He asked. Uh, hey. So since you're, uh, I'm saving questions for later. That's me. Uh, what inspired the violins in the song "Earthly Love"? It's just that we uh, we wanted to 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 do uh, a, a different uh, intervention in the music, and that's back in the days when I was, you know, the violin that's been has been there for a few years, and I was getting more comfortable. And uh, it's it's just, and I was listening to a lot of chamber music and modern uh, composers, you know, like the okay. Russians, you know, like Shostakovich and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. I wanna I wanna uh, I wanted to find a way just to to. To put it to 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 to, to have a, uh, like a chamber music intervention in the mu- in the song or something, you know, it's just it's, uh, as as simple as that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, okay, let's go to the next one. Sorry, I'm I'm drinking a little bit, so I'm getting a little buzzed. You know, it's okay, it's okay, no worries. Yeah, it's getting it's getting later. Um, so uh, we're just okay. getting started here. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I'm fucking down to go all night. Luke May, I'll go all night. Um, yeah, dude, we're here for the long haul. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay, I don't want to read all that. Casey, can you read all that? I'm drunk. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, considering the lengthy breaks between Gor- okay, considering the lengthy breaks between Gorgut's periods of activity, what does he channel the drive that makes him create extreme music and the band when the band is dormant? Um, does he see it as connected to woodworking or does he see it as completely separate? No, it's two different things. But me, yeah. uh, I like to stay uh, connected with the scene. I like to listen to new bands. You know, I, I, I'm going to go to Metal Injection, Metal Sucks every day. Uh, if there's something new, you know, I like to discover new bands. So I stay connected with this. Yeah, that's my way to. Uh... Do you still have that like that? young drive that you had in the beginning of like finding new stuff oh yeah like, yeah because dude i i did i did a lot of tape trading in my early days eh? yeah yeah before when i be even a bit before i started the band so i was really i, I was pen paling with manelli from pestilence i was wow. writing with yufe from entomb i was writing with a couple bands you know like a, you know metallion that did slayer mag Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Norway. He is the first guy that did a Gorgots review, you know, with a, re- wow. with a song rehearsal, yeah. you know. So I, I always wanted to stay connected, even when we I'm not uh, like active, you know, uh, with the band. But uh, it, 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 my heart is always there with this, you know. That so kind of leads me in the, with the workshop. No, it kind of leads me in the next thing is uh, I mean, next question. So what has Luke May listened to recently? That's new. That's I mean probably like I would I would guess that like bands that you've influenced like Ulcerate or like bands yeah. like that you like love but like oh. what are you listening to that that's new? Lately, Who's lately, giving you the surprise factor? Surprise is yeah. The lately, the I've night. been spinning a lot the uh, the new Revocation, which I fucking love. God, yeah, it's love great. It. It's great. Flawless. Yeah. So I like the new Revocation. I like the last uh, Chemist record. 
I like uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, last the uh, cannibal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Firepower from uh, Judas Priest, dude. I spin that record so fucking much. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, what oh, else? Yeah. What yeah. else? That's a good question. Because me, you know, I go practice uh, snooker uh, every day, like an hour, hour and a half, and I put the metal on the fucking Bluetooth, you know. So okay, what's you gotta explain snooker to me? This is a no. perfect time for me to learn what that is because I was a billiards. I I am a billiards player. Oh yeah, good. Currently, I like to play. I I haven't played in a long time, but I call myself a billiards player because I've been playing my whole life. And I know that Gilbert's in the chat right now, or at least he was. He would love to hear this part. But okay. what's the difference between snooker? Yeah, what do you I gotta like do. To know. But when you say billiard, do you play nine ball or you play eight ball? Or what do you play? No, traditional, um, <laughs> just rack them up. <laughs> I don't even know okay, what it's so, called, so really. It's like eight ball, nine ball, balls. But snooker, snooker. Rack is... up the triangle and let me break that shit. And then yeah. I'll pick a side and you pick a side and let's <laughs> so, go, dude. Yeah. So, so snooker is, uh, is a British uh, game and it's uh, the, the, the table is 12 feet long by six feet wide. And the pockets okay. are a, a smaller, oh, and uh, and there's no corner on the on the cushions. You know they're round, so it's very. If you hit the cushion a bit, you know it's not gonna go in. It's very, uh, very, uh, hmm. uh, uh, not not uh, for uh, unforgiving game. You know, yeah. fifteen reds and colors. You have uh, uh, black, pink, blue, yellow, brown, and green, which have all different uh, uh, values. So yellow is two. Green three, brown four, blue five, uh, pink six, and uh, black seven. And the reds is uh, one point each. So you need to put a red to put a color. So when you put a color after, you put it back on its spot. So that's the way it goes. Hmm. Jesus. That's, so, I'm, uh, I have a pool table downstairs in my house, and I am I could barely hit the fucking any color that I need to hit in. <laughs> but man, me and me, I, I've been in love with snooker since uh, I'm like 13, 14 years old. You know, you gotta practice every day. You gotta practice like that, that like a lot, right? Oh that's yeah, I practice yeah. like hour and a half every day. Yeah, yeah, every you day. have to. That's yeah. what I, I've come so, to the real day. So, what do you call your stick? Your it, we call it a cue. What? You, yeah, yeah, it's a cue. Yeah, yeah. I had still? a cue. Is it the same yeah, kind yeah. of deal? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the the tip is smaller. I had a special cue made by a. Uh, a very fine uh, cue maker in England, you know, custom and everything. And uh, I went to play twice at the Quebec uh, Championship as well. Oh, Jesus. wow. So, uh, but dude, don't get me wrong. I'm not kicking uh, the province ass uh, on snooker, you know. I, I, I'm okay. <laughs> Have but, uh, you tried to make your own cue? Yeah, I, I made uh, I made a couple cues uh, maybe two years ago just to, uh, yeah, yeah, on the uh, way. Do they play nice? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But uh, I mean, uh, dude, I got enough stuff on my plate with the science and the carving and learning fucking yeah. raw anatomy. I have no time to for a few business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're getting back but, into the touring industry, like you got to come back and stay. And if you're in Santa Cruz, Bay Area, we got a, a very nice place to stay. Pool table for you to show show me up. Like, of it'd course. Be great. <laughs> yeah. That'd be I'll awesome. Be happy you got to come play some for sure. Oh, yeah, totally. I love it. That'd be awesome, man. <laughs> Now, for awesome. me like my, my my main thing like with pool is and it's gonna sound like really dumb but like when it's god this is gonna sound so, so dumb but like <laughs> but just like the it's like hitting the, the longer shots like when you have like you know the cue balls close yeah and then the long shot i can't i, I understand the angle of where i need to hit the ball i get or it aiming. yeah aiming like i don't under i i know where i need to hit the ball like i get it and you I'm visualize like, the target I visualize where i need to hit it it's all i hit it it's all no yeah <laughs> just goes, like, goes rogue and I, I can never get it down point of contact but you know, you know yeah. what uh, Joel with this again yeah. to make to make a link with the music I brought the experience I got from learning riff and practicing slowly yeah. I brought that to the pool hall to practice uh, technicalities like the way you get down on the shot you practice those movements that's why through snooker and music and the experience by learning violin it got me very interested into sport, not for watching a football game, but yeah. about all the the, the 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 technicality. If you break down what makes good dynamic, makes, like a good golfer for driving, what yeah, yeah. movement? In, it's the same thing as practicing riffs 
or Boeing. You need to break down all the movement to fucking nail it every time, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing, like practicing with a metronome. So maybe that's the bridge I can make. Yep. That makes a lot of sense, actually. All those things that I like, you know? Because for me, it'd be like, oh, it's like people are watching. I'm like, oh, shit, I need to make this shot. And I'll like, I'll I'll take the pressure and be like, the the best advice I can give, go on YouTube. There's great coaches, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, give it a shot, you know, break it down. Like when you learn a tough riff, same thing. It's It's crazy because like the woodworking is like your physical manifestation of art snooker is like a geometrical just like art game in a sense yeah and then music is like meets in the middle of both of that word expression physical and something else yeah you know yeah 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 yeah. definitely it all meets Uh, it it all meets at one spot those things really do connect very well true yeah that's awesome and that's cool that yeah that's Luke LeMay, guys. But these are all state of mind that I enjoy when I'm doing those things, you know, but on different channels, so to speak, you know. Like when I'm when I'm 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 writing a new song, it's not like when I practice with the boys, you know, when, yeah. when I'm crafting new ideas. Then when I focus, you know, to, to practice the snooker, it's good for, for concentration, you know, and stay focused, you know. Uh, and mm-hmm. then uh, I like creativity when when I'm I'm in the shop. So it's all good for the mind, but on, on different uh, 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 on different ways. Yeah. I didn't want to use this word too much, but it really is the only word that describes all of that. Really, which is hypnotic. Like you can get into a hypnotic state with all three of those things, especially when we're talking about Gorga music in, in particular. You can yeah. get hypnotic with snooker. You can get hypnotic. Yeah with the woodwork and hypnotic while you're listening to Gorguts, which I clearly was, I succumb to every time I've seen Gorguts live is you, you kind of just get lost and taken with along the ride. Like you, (laughs) that, that that's really what, what I'm looking for in a live setting and your music makes it, it, it makes it, it uncontrollable to the point where you are just in a hypnotic state you're in this trance and you're just taken along for this ride dude True. And- but that that's what music and composition is all about you want to take the listener to to a place you know mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah that's what it's I was. About. I was explaining it to my coworker today too, because I was listening to it at work and he was like this, this makes me feel a certain way because he's not a metal guy <laughs> and I was like, it's kind of more of like, look at it like a soundscape. Like you're somewhere, think of some, think of where you are while this is playing. That's yeah. what I, that was the little homework assignment I gave him. Like if you're enjoying, he's like, okay, he's rocking with it. And he does enjoy like rock and roll and a bit of metal and stuff. But he, he was like, all right. I feel a certain way. And I'm like, that's the point. Exactly. You're not, you're not really listening to it. You're also feeling it and just feel what you're feeling. That's what it's all about. Uh, you know, the, the very bottom line, you know, at the end of the day, that that's what, that that's the use of it. You know, that that's the role of it. That's a role of art, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you go see an amazing movie. You, you go see a, a concert, you know, so a play or whatever, it brings your emotion somewhere, you know, that's right. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, you know. So totally. And and I mentioned it earlier, but the tension and release thing is was in that conversation too. And how he because he, he was like, Oh, dude, the the because he likes electronic music. Okay. And I said tension and release. And he's like, I get it. Release is the breakdown. And I said, Yes, and sure. the build up. The build up to that that breakdown is the tension. Yeah, yeah. It's like and, when you have those 20 minute song you need peaks and valleys in there otherwise exactly and or an orgasm or an orgasm <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> i mean i'm just being real and i was just telling him that gorguts may give you take you through a little more of that build up and yeah, the build anticipation up. and that uncomfortableness before they finally give you that release like but the when dis- it happens the dissonance, the dissonance and then like 
fucking give you a fucking prize at the end. There's, yeah, there's a prize, yeah. The prize is at the end of the tunnel. You just have to withstand the tension that we're gonna hear and feel, you know, until we get to that point. But there always is that release, and that's yeah. that's that's great. And yeah. and it's not at any point that you would necessarily think it's coming. And that's also think we the the word of tonight was surprise, surprise. and that was totally yeah. the word that i feel when i listen to yeah. your music is the element of surprise yeah and again that's something i said very often in interviews it's like me when i'm i'm sitting down and i'm writing new music i want to write the music that i would love to hear and that would go like oh tab i'm like i didn't see this one coming right you see so yeah if yeah. you if you achieve that for yourself, you know, it's mission accomplished to, for me, you know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so did we, how far did we get into the colored sands situation? Because I don't even think we brought up Longstreth. Longstreth was added. Yeah, into the, no, uh, no, we did. We, I, like, oh, okay. uh, we, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, so we, did, uh, we, did, we, we did the first uh, weekend, you know, we jammed all together the first three songs. And dude, it was... Uh, right on we we did uh, uh we did the first uh, pre-production then uh i wrote uh two more songs uh kev and colin wrote each of their song and there you go you have the record you know so it went it went very very smoothly yeah nice yeah yeah the uh, getting those guys on all three of those guys that's a super massive force right there. oh man the, i say that often, <laughs> also in interview with, with these guys i'm the worst player in the band <laughs> uh, I, you give them around for their money i'm the merch guy <laughs> but you also you also influenced everyone in the band so i guess you get that <laughs> right no so all right and i i got i was very happy to have seen all uh, one of the dates on that tour for that record got a t-shirt still wear it till this day um then the last your last release uh, how do i pronounce the first word again? is it Plates. platies platies dust um uh, um true monumental feat for me because i I always think of these long songs, how we're talking about Rush and, you know, all these other um, examples of just writing one song that it, that goes for so long. And, and then also, you know, reading about the, the lyrical content and, and where all that came from. And that made me want to ask you about like, your interests in history and and antiqu antiquity and all that stuff because i was always intrigued by the sumerians and 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 the fact that you you honed in on this it's the house of wisdom is that yeah. what it was yeah yeah in uh baghdad and how it it, it, it to me like you brought that to my attention i didn't know about this it's, house of wisdom it's such a beautiful story that that library that place so i know and 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 i had no clue because of you know what you only get taught so much in school and then you get left with you know your own um intrigues to follow after that and so you don't come across this situation where there was this place that um, was uh, preserving most of knowledge. humanity's knowledge up to that point. Yeah. And um, how, you, you know, uh, greed can quickly erase that if it's not protected well. I mean, dude, I I went into it deep after I realized what that out that that EP was was about, and I'm like, holy shit! Oh, it's, it's, it, it, it's a wonderful subject, and and you know what? What's fun? Uh, very quickly, like 
me very often, like like Colored Sand, I wrote all the music. We were we, we did all the music. And me, I kind of leave my radar open, and I didn't know yet when I was gonna talk about, and you know, and one day my girlfriend comes uh, home and she goes like, Oh, I went to visit an old friend, uh, an old uh, working colleague today. Uh, oh, fine. And uh, she goes like, oh, she's got a young daughter. Okay, cool. Nice. And uh, she gave me a little gift. Oh, yeah? What was that? Oh, she had a coloring book, and she colored a mandala for me and gave it to me as a gift. I said, what? Whoa. She colored a mandala. A mandala. What the fuck is this? I heard that word before. And, dude, it's because of that drawing that, that you got the colored sand concept right there. Wow. That, that's how it got on my radar. Isn't that mm. great? Mm -hmm. And and then I, I went to do the research on the Tibetan people. And that's why colored sands, you know, it's made the mandalas are made with colored sands and everything. So my first, my first idea lyrically was to make the whole record, each step of the process of doing a mandala. But then I realized uh, the angle was too ambitious and uh, dude i would still writing lyrics to this day uh, for the record you know i mean uh, no yeah. shit mm -hmm. so the angle wasn't too uh, wasn't good mm. but i wanted to keep the, my foot in tibet and everything i'll come back to house of wisdom in a second but i just want to that's not good i i, I, ju I just want to share how the unexpected with 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 a with a young uh, 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 child uh, uh, coloring book drawing, you know that's what gave me the idea for the fucking metal record, you know. So you got to keep your antenna always open. Oh yes, dude. <laughs> yeah. You never know, huh? So, um, so I started reading on that and blah blah blah, and then I changed the angle for the colored sand. You know, four songs on the beauty of Tibet and four songs on the disaster and the oppression. So that's better balance you know and 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 bringing uh, mandalas to one song which is colored sand so this way we have the good uh, a good uh, structure you know for yeah. thematic uh, structure so to speak so, Very cool that's awesome so, so going back to uh, pleiades so write the music to pleiades and then hey you know what you're going to talk about and uh, not now not yet i haven't found it you know but right. I, I, i'm i'm checking you know and uh reading my like a uh, magazine with book reviews and stuff but uh, i i i didn't know i just didn't know so one day i go visit an old friend you know that would stop to the shop every now and then and actually he, he's an old uh, he, he's a man much older than me he used to be a diplomat in in europe you know he had like political jobs and this and that and he would he, he would promote the Quebec art like in Japan and places like that. Anyway, very cultivated guy. He, he he would stop at my workshop all the time. We became friends and we have very good conversation. And uh, yeah, so one day uh, I think, oh, it's been a while since I visit uh, my my uh, this man, you know. So so I said, I'll just give him a call. Hey, what's up? Blah blah blah. Can I stop by for coffee? And uh, sure. So I go visit him. So we talk about all kind of things, you know. Again, we have a very good conversation, you know. So he's very curious, and he's been all around the world, and he's you can talk about anything. So he's always like, "Hey, you you want you want this pile of uh, of uh, of magazine, you know? You you can bring them home." And he likes like uh, you know philosophical magazine. There's a lot of book reviews in there, and very interesting topics, you know, uh, about anything. So, okay, so I leave with the pile of a uh, magazine and one day, you know, we're still writing the record and then having coffee in the morning and I, uh, and then I see this uh, book review uh, page and there's a book called The House of Wisdom. Mm. I said, what the fuck is this? And then it, it really catch my attention. So I read the review of the book and I'm like, holy fucking shit. Mm -hmm. This is amazing right i said i want to talk about this so so okay gotta educate myself on the topic so buy books and that but different differently from the tibet uh 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 how can i say that uh i'm sorry i'm searching my words here that's okay 
you know, for the period of time when I was like educating myself on the topic, so I know what I'm talking about when I sit down to write lyrics, you gotta you gotta submerge yourself with the topic, you know. Right, so, right. But uh, strangely enough, I couldn't find this many books on the House of Wisdom, but. There was a, an amazing uh, three parts documentary that you guys can watch. It's on YouTube and it, it was made by the BBC mm -hmm. and it's called uh, mm -hmm. the, the Science uh, of Islam or something like that. And it's mm -hmm. uh, by a professor called uh, Jim Al Khalili, which is a British guy. He, he, he's got two, uh, a British mom or British dad and, and, and Near East mom, or I don't know which parents, uh, what nationality, but anyway, you get the picture. Yeah. And he's the one that wrote the book about the house of wisdom. And it's one of his topic that is closest to his heart. And dude, this guy is a fucking neuro physician. No, not neuro, but astro physician. Yeah. Super collider studier, you name it. Right, yeah. right, right. I mean, no problem with math, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. He teaches like in fucking uh, Cambridge or something in the, in England, you know, very old and and prestigious university, whatever. So, I found the book in New York City. Kev, go pick it up at Strands. You know, it's a it's a bookshop place, very big uh, bookshop. So I get the book, and dude, I was so eager to read this, and it's an amazing story. So, to to cut it short a bit because I can go along on the lyrics. <laughs> uh, my my approach for Pleiades was to talk about knowledge like if it would be like a person. Mm. That, that was because because I heard a phrase, a, a, a quote once in a, in a movie, they were talking about knowledge, how knowledge through history would migrate. Imagine as knowledge as a person or as something that would migrate from one place of the world in different times in history so per se uh in the 13 something 14 something a lot of knowledge like in italy with renaissance and then after it migrates someplace else maybe went to asia or something i'm, I'm just talking I'm yeah talking. yeah no definitely and i found that very interesting that knowledge could travel totally okay so so this and the house of wisdoms so if you read the lyrics again think about this I, I, i'm talking about knowledge like uh, like an individual uh, 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 uh that would go from one one part of the world and then uh, and then and then re let's say if you talk about a person oh have you seen uh, such no i haven't seen it's been a long time and then oh yeah i see it in this five state away so you know, it's uh, so imagine yeah. knowledge, not five state away, but imagine knowledge moving from a continent to another continent. So it's the same yeah, concept. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what really got my attention. So when Pleiades starts, knowledge was in Rome in year, if my mind's right, it's 500 uh, or something. I'm sorry, my mind is not right for that. I don't want to throw out numbers for numbers. But anyway, then Rome burns, knowledge disappear dark ages and then knowledge resurgent in uh in uh, in near east or middle east in baghdad so that's that's what created a uh, house of wisdom you know and mm -hmm. then you had all those thinkers and it became a place for thinkers to yeah. gather and they the kind birthplace of, of a lot of things i'm sorry the birthplace of a lot of ideas. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's 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 it, it, it's such an amazing topic. And me, I like this. You know, Renaissance and all those older times. You know, but but and I'm really, I'm really uh, uh, interested into like science, how science uh, started and everything. So House of Wisdom just covered it all. Right. You know? So 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 at the House of Wisdom, you had all these thinkers. You know that would preserve and share on those ideas and concepts. And they would add like a 3.0, you know, their, mm -hmm. their own ideas. So that's how algebra appeared and all these things. So it's, it, it's fascinating, fascinating. Right. So, so, 
so again, it was only because of a magazine little article. You got to keep the antenna out, you know, and that exactly. Oh, wow, you know, and then just just to close on 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 Pleiades uh, on 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 the lyric thing, I said, you know what? I I, I do research on uh, Jim Al Khalili, you know, the author of the book House of Wisdom, and I found his email at the University Faculty of uh, Science, uh, whatever. I said. I, I can't, uh, I'll drop him a line. Just say, hey, what's yeah. up? <laughs> uh, love your book. Wrote yeah. the death metal uh, song about 30 minutes on your on your topic, and it's fucking amazing. You know, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that, oh, hey, my song is amazing. It's not this. It's that the book is amazing. Okay. Right, 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 okay. right. You get it. And this guy does conference all over the world and everything. So you get the character, you know. Right. Dude, two days later or something. Hey, Luke, what's up? Uh, Jim here. I went to check out Gorguts. Maybe it would be fun if I play some Gorguts when I walk in to do my conference on the house. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. So nice dude. Of him to take some time just to see. Yeah. Hey, and he even went to check out the band. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're that guy and somebody contacts you and says, I made a 30 minute plus piece of music inspired by your writing, that dude better get back to you right away. <laughs> hey man, these these people are busy, they're teaching. And no, I know, I'm just saying, it's like, but, I shouldn't say that. No, if I was that guy, I, know, I, actually I know, would be I like, know. oh man, that that's so cool because he, it's his life's work and, and that, that type of um, uh, compliment on his work to say that i made a 30 plus piece of 30 plus minute piece and of it's music, fucking extreme music based and, and on so his writing cool. so you see i mean yeah. nothing wrong when i started writing about gory lyrics and everything it's fine it's it's all good but that's what's great about death metal it can be a vehicle for amazing beautiful intricate stories oh yes you know, uh, yeah, I gave up on the door stuff the angle that, that you approach it to, to, to share it, you know, the story. Yeah. I wanted to say more with my writing pretty early in my life too. I think 19 was when I was like, ah, oh, dude, writing gore lyrics kind of, it's just not my thing anymore. I, I'll still support the bands that I grew up listening to that have those style of lyrics, but I just wanted to do something different because i was a poet before i even started doing this you know you like words you like the, the i words. love words i i really really love so, to play with words it's very fun and don't get me wrong you know i had my share if you read consider dead or erosion and it's it's, it's all good you know it's it, but but now yeah i'm more into those those kind when those type of stories end up on my radar it's like mm, you know, uh, I would love to, 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 and also uh, my, my craft becomes a vehicle to share the story. It's like, Hey guys, check out this story. It's amazing. You know, and you see, you never heard about house of wisdom before. And it, it got your attention too, because of the craft of death metal, you know? So th this exactly. is all good. It's win, 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 you know? No, it is. It definitely is. It's, yeah. It, it gives uh, a percentage of people who are in underground death metal, uh, avenue to be like holy shit there this is where all this stuff came from yeah. you know that yeah. just a piece of knowledge that they never would have had and that and then it feeds back into what you're talking about because you're helping you're pushing the knowledge forward to go f float around the the uh, planet again as another storm you're adding to the storm of knowledge that's floating yeah. around the planet so just to come back on the uh, Dr. Uh, Al Khalili, you know, I always said to myself, dude, I got, I, I, I got to get him a Pleiades vinyl because in the vinyl there's a nice poster, you know, and you have all these ancient uh, scientific tools, you know, to measure constellations and stuff like that, which he would totally nail right away. And but that was inspired from his book, you know. So uh, someday I should I should send him uh, this, you know. Wouldn't that be nice? He's got the fucking Gorgas poster. In the oh, office, killer! You know? <laughs> no, definitely. Like I said, if I was that guy, I would I would be really stoked if somebody was that moved to m m can continue making yeah. something else that had to do with my writing 
and here you are. Hey, I got 30 plus yeah. minutes of music. <laughs> very humble, very nice. Writing. And taking the time, you know, to do that. So same thing with uh, with Colored Sand. There's a song talking about Tibetan leaving Tibet about a book that I it's called uh, Mur Mur Murder in the in the Snow or something. Nice. And uh, and I I wrote to the author, you know, to ask if I could uh, borrow quotes from the book as introduction before the 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 the, the, the lyrics, you know. And mm -hmm. he wrote me back, oh no problem, no problem. So when the record was done, I sent him uh, a link, you know, so we get to see because there was a painting for each song, right. and he was he, and he was really happy. So he sent me a copy of his book, which I already have. But he sent me a, a new copy of the book and he, he autographed it. Uh, so that's so killer, he, dude. He, he's a, you see, life that's what it's all about those special moments, you know. So it's, it's exactly it's totally yeah. making a connection with uh, uh, an inspiration, yeah, of your a true connection where yeah, and and you and just say, feel hey, the dude. genuine uh, uh, thanks that they're giving you. That That's what, what else can you ask for, yeah, you know. Yeah and say you know hey the story you you, you <clears throat> told in your book it's beautiful it's amazing and uh, that connects people you know so it's all good perfect man well dude i think we've have we gotten we've gotten up to current day well current day now uh, really quick let's talk about now you've decided to once again bring gore guts back so let's talk about that for a quick minute before we mm -hmm. let you go mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I got the, I got the, I got, I got the e email from, uh, from uh, the, 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 the decibel and the festival and everything, you know. And it's been a while. It was like maybe someday. I don't know when I'm gonna start jamming and maybe start maybe jamming and writing some new stuff. And I was not procrastinated, but uh, you know, very busy. Uh, with uh, uh, with the shop, you know, and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, a lot of a lot of sick people around in the family, you know. So I'm taking care of an elder one also, you know. So I really want to be present for all this. But you know, then we got more help, you know, from uh, for for the health condition, which is that's all good. And then I got the call, uh, the email, and I said, you know what. I really want to play, you know, and so that this is a, and it was a, a, a very good, uh, 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 um, how do you say that? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm searching the, a very good uh, occasion, you know, by, by, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's a nice festival, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and Albert, you've been knowing him for a while, it's family, you know, it's all, it's all good. So, uh, and then I did, uh, I, I said, wait. I need to get in touch with the boys, you know, to see what their schedule are. Because Colin's very busy with the studio. I gotta check if everybody's available and do it right away. And we're we're so eager to spend time together again, you know. It's been six years, so uh, so it, it's all those things, you know. So first thing you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, playing fucking Rod Anatomy, and uh, I'm gonna have a fucking ball, you know. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so it's very simple like this, you know. But uh, and then, um, oh, 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 of course, you know. And then, then when we get done with now, it's it it, it it's a matter where uh, you know I started jamming with Patrice. I already jammed with Patrice like uh, two three times already, you know. And goes very good. And uh, and then we go to New York City next week and jam with with Colin and and Kevin. And and then so when when we get through. The Decibel Festival and everything for sure. I'm not gonna put the guitar away and just focus. Yeah, on, that was gonna be my next thing. No, 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 no. So I'm really in the mood. I wanna, I wanna yeah. write. Uh, I wanna write new music. You know. So yes, that's yeah. where we were yeah. trying to build this up to. Where if if we can figure out if there's gonna be a new Gorgut. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yes. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We all win. We all oh yeah, win. and I'm really, uh, I'm really. We all win. Yeah. I, I'm in the, the it, mood yes. for, for, you know, to be in the room and okay, let's play that new riff from the beginning. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh man, aren't mm -hmm. we? Yeah, that, yeah, that passion right back. That passion's you know? back. I'm mm -hmm. really missing this. You know. So yeah. 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 Well, yeah. man, Luke, I, I gotta say, Luke, like you've been one of the fucking, one of my most like 
I mean, just talking to you and stuff, like one of my favorite uh, guests. Oh, like, dude, me yeah. too. Oh, yeah, it's for sure. Oh, yeah, it's been so. Like, you guys all nice. at all, and like, there's like a, a couple yeah. of like, the ones. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some, there's some top are. shelf uh, episodes for us yeah. hosts, and you're, you're, you're going right much. up there. What's I'm that? not talking, not talking too much. I have a big mouth. No, you can cut it off and take it to thirty minutes. No, also, you might disappear. You might disappear for like fucking three more years. We never hear from you for a while. So the fact that you're talking too much, like we're getting it out of you. Yeah, make sure you get all. We're squeezing the sponge for as yeah, much right. liquid as we can, dude. Right, yeah. right, right, right. No, but thank we're, you so much for showing up, man. We're we, we are definitely huge, huge for us. This is and and thank you, Anthony, by the way, for fucking plugging away and poking this guy till he shows up on our podcast. I, I was poking yeah, your sides a little it. bit. Man. I love it, man. I love it. You you've no, meant no, so much that, to us. Very nice. You guys are passionate about the music. I'm always uh I'm I'm always happy to 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 share about the craft and you know, Definitely. writing, you guys play in bands and you, we, we're all at the end of the day, we're all passionate about the same thing, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's just great. You know, and, no, and, totally and it is, I, I'll, I'll speak for myself and these guys as well. So it, it is an honor just to <laughs> even, you. to Dude, even total honor for sure. It's Dude, an honor to, crazy. to even share emails with you, let alone <laughs> do a four hour episode with you. We just got through four hours right now, guys. Wow. We just yeah, broke yeah. four hours. Yeah. And, and for some reason it is the, the real like heroes of mine that have broken the four hour realm guys. Isn't that, was, that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. only, there's very yeah. few people will break the four hour thing with. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Luke, you no, I I knew this was going to be a great episode. Not only because of our correspondence, just because of how many people commented saying saying the same exact thing about how they've met you on at shows and how humble and nice you were. Yeah. And I remember my experience with you and saying, "Oh yeah, that's exactly how my experience was with that man." Yeah. And and yeah. You, but you're, but uh, you're... like in shows, you know, I I, lo I love to be at the merch booth and meeting uh, with people, you know, and thanking them for coming to the show. And, yeah, and we hang out like we're, we just did together, you know. Yeah. So I, I love this. What we're going to do, I'm going to sit uh, in the fucking uh, green room and the... Uh, a big yeah, yeah. with myself i'd rather hang out with the people you know because you remember how important important your experiences are, are like when you're younger and you meet someone that you look up to and they're they're cool mm -hmm. and you're like mm -hmm. whoa okay that's well, charges the batteries point. you know and it's uh, yeah, yeah. it's important for me you know it's uh yeah, totally. yeah. No, and exactly. i think in our our style of music our genre of music it, it's actually m more uh common for people to be this way because we're already humbled by the fact that we're playing such a niche style of music. It's a small community. We always yeah. know it's going to be a small community. So it kind of humbles us from the beginning. It's not mainstream or uh yeah. 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 You got to be into it to be into it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't just like find it on the radio. And that's why I fucking love this community. I love everybody about this thing and that's why we're still doing this podcast today yeah. and that's why i'm fucking talking to luke lemay right motherfucking now <laughs> god damn it dude that's crazy yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. massive respect man that yeah was so much yeah well, uh, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm for twitch people we're gonna go check out another person that i f feel like is like in the same really? realm of like a new school of, of realm of uh luke is uh we're gonna go rate Ma max max is oh. playing guitar right now yes max awesome. anomalous so our friend yeah. Max, we're gonna. So, uh, so, so Luke, how it works on here is that we like it's like a community of people that we watch like a live stream. We can send all of our viewers to go watch someone else. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go send him to to Max right now. He's an amazing guitar, one of the best guitar players in like the newer kind of Been weird our show. A couple times, yeah, yeah. we love him. Oh, yeah. Amazing. But yeah. Fuck awesome. yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's do the wrap up, guys. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, one more time for BattleForgeCoffee.com. All right, help out the homies. Deeds uh, of flesh. Buy our fucking merch, dude. Sorry, I'm <laughs> buy their merch, but before <laughs> you show. buy their merch, buy our merch. Cali Death Podcast. <laughs> Big Cartel. Com. Two different shirt designs. Please go buy them. We are, uh, we love them. We love you, and we want you to wear them and show us pictures of them on your social media. Like, in the pod, also, we didn't do a live bagging, but uh. 
We'll do. We'll bag it up live if you guys buy it. Live watch them. Like during the pod, at least. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Um, but yeah, and also hit us up on uh, uh, the socials, um, Twitch TV and uh, YouTube. Those are the places we want you to subscribe. If you had fun, stick with us. We got a lot of stuff coming up. And for Gore Guts, where do you guys, where do you, you guys, where do you, Luke, want people to go? Where do you, to... Luke? <laughs> guys, I almost made it. Okay. We made it past four hours. It's okay. It's okay. I've been, I've been enjoying uh, alcoholic <laughs> beverages this whole time. I've been trying to pace it and i think i've been doing pretty good <laughs> you know, for, info, uh, for the band and all that stuff is that yeah you know, yes where yeah. do you want people yeah, they, to go? go the best place is uh, the facebook page yeah facebook. shout out just to steven shout out to steven you're uh the guy who runs yeah. the facebook page he's a great yeah. dude he yeah. uh very nice and uh i liked speaking with him so yeah. rock on steven <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> hey luke thanks for thanks again man I, we've said it a thousand times but man this is this is huge for us and you've Thank informed you so many bands that i love including our own Absolutely, and dude. uh jesus yeah. man i Thank also said it was one of my favorite discography crams that i've done for an, a show because i've always loved gorgat so much and then i just got to wa- listen to you from front to back your whole discography waiting for this episode and i loved every second of it dude thank you oh yeah thank you all right man well hopefully we'll do a a recap and hang out again one time yeah Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll stay in touch when when we get back on the road you know we'll we'll get to hang out together please definitely definitely take care guys have a good night peace out bye-bye